I think recording is in progress. Okay, hello, good evening, and welcome everybody to hello. the one and only Cradle of Fear watch along and live commentary. Now, this is an absolute first, it's a total exclusive for my patrons. Um, so you can see everyone on the screen. I'm not going to say hi to everyone, apart from our insanely important guest. Um, the one and only director of Cradle of Fear, Alex Chandon. Hello, everybody. Hello, everybody. We're so honoured. We are literally honoured to Hello, have welcome. You nice to see you, Peter, Kevin, Stuart, Matt. Great. Oh, Alex, very nice. Uh, great name, mate. <coughs> Fernando. And Weegzilla, you strange old man. Ah! <laughs> Bless regular. you, mate. He's a regular. I love your name. That's what you'll get. Okay, so uh, yeah, thanks Emily for having me on this watch along. I've not done one of these before, so this is all new to me. Uh, oh, I've got my friends here. Sorry. Buddy. Who's your buddy? Hello! <laughs> I honestly forgot he was there. Uh, this is Neil Keenan. Uh, he plays uh, one of the characters. Thomas, don't I? Yeah. Is it Thomas? Mm. Uh, yeah, the fellow that loses his leg. Spoiler. Um, <laughs> and he also helped kind of like, uh, just like a Kind of like a, a runner, but more than a runner. He did the making of film. Yeah. Uh, pretty much helped with every part of the, uh, the project and also worked on all my other films. Uh, so, yeah, if anyone knows anything about film and me and stuff, it's Neil Keenan. Um, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I, I think... Uh, pleasure. So, yeah, I just, just again, this is all new to us, so forgive me if I sort of fuck up or make mistakes or look the wrong way or whatever. We're quite, we're quite a forgiving bunch. I can see you've got your Cradle of Fear t-shirt, Alex. I have, yeah. I dug it up there especially. Well, I will, what's the word you say in poker or whatever? I will raise you. Um, I think you said you're going to raise your t-shirt there, Emily. But Oh, uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> I will Ooh. raise you. Um, I've got, well, I don't know. Have you got this on the back? Hang on. Hang on. <laughs> this is no, not no higher, higher. <laughs> not attractive. Can you see that? Well, oh wow, well, yeah. No, he yeah. hasn't. I yeah, yeah no. I haven't got that t-shirt. Oh. I can't tell. <clears throat> we, might have, we might have to do a swap. Bad girl yeah. stab good. It's tiny, it really is tiny. <laughs> we only made that in girl size, I think. Um yeah. I'd, I'd love one anyway. That um, does sound good. I was so proud of that. That was like my sleeping t-shirt for a long time. My little, you know, <clears throat> dreams t-shirt. Okay, right. So the idea is we've all got um, Cradle of Fears on Netflix. How do you feel about that, Alex? <laughs> oh, yeah, no, I was quite surprised, actually. Uh, and it's excellent. I watched it on Netflix, I think, when it came out about six months ago. And I was really impressed with how it looked. I think they've done something with the upscaling and uh, it looks and sounds really cool. Oh, so, uh, yeah, I was uh, dead chuffed about that because it's kind of taken a bit of a life of its own and become a bit of a, a cult, which is brilliant. It's definitely um, a cult classic now, I think. Wouldn't you agree, boys? In my Definitely, yeah. yeah. 100%. Where is... I can't... I'm trying to switch between... I, I, I don't have, by the way, a moderator or anything... So I've now got Alex pinned as the main guest. Oh, fuck a doodle do. How do I get everyone back? <laughs> anyway. Um, okay, so uh, all I've got as well to show you, I have a lot of DVDs. It's one of the most asked for DVDs. So my top tier people get a free, sort of, well, it's not free, but uh, a signed DVD and they get pictures. So anyone involved, in this we'll get I got kind of had this made up so oh, uh, cool. I might think of a question oh yeah me and Alex might try and think of a question and a little goodie bag prize oh yeah and also oh, put these uh, put these <clears throat> into order of sequence yeah. of how yeah. this poor goth girl um, I found a few extra t-shirts as well so potentially I might have a question to ask later on, maybe after the film or something. Wow. And maybe the first person that types it uh, spelt correctly into the chat would win or something, the answer. Uh, <laughs> and uh, there's a... <laughs> Have we gone out of focus? Hey, you're a bit blurry. 
Oh, no, you got one like um, Yeah, did, did you actually show that? Show that top. Because the one Neil uh, blew his nose into is, is a, a bit rarer, I think. <laughs> it's now. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it's quite a stylish uh, black front, I think you'll find, with a small logo. I'd say more of a sweatshirt and, than a T-shirt as well. Yeah, yeah more of a sweatshirt. It's a long sleeve. So. Uh, on the reverse, a nice picture of Danny crushing Sean's head. Uh, oh, and it's God! Man yeah. Michael, which is my uh, email. But you don't know that. <laughs> you might have, to, might, uh, might have to bleep that, Emily. Okay, we'll try. I'm trying to get the gallery back up and I can't. Show grid video. Show the grid. Please show the grid because I want to see it. Are you going to do a countdown and then we all press play or something? We're going to have a countdown. Right. Yeah, it's very exciting. But I just, I can't. Right, guys. For some reason, I can't get back to unpinning Alex. <laughs> oh, there we go. Uh, yeah, we're it's quite clear. Zoom. Zoom's changed the entire... Oh, remove pin. <clears throat> there we go. I've got it now. Sorry. Okay. If you are desperate to ask something and I'm not seeing you, just unmute yourself and go, Oi! Or something like that. Just make a gesture. Any... Yep. Any gesture? Uh, hang on a second. Right. Just, uh, <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, no. Uh, I, I just realised I, I probably won't be able to type anything, but I can answer. If I see a question, I can just answer it, can't I? Yeah. Yeah. That's the thing. We've seen this film, so it's more about. <laughs> oh, so I just realised when it says Alex to everyone, that's you, Alex. I just thought. Yes. I just thought it was, that was that was me. So, uh, yes, question. Alex, Alex, what's, oh, yeah. what's your second name? Who, me? It's not Chandon. <laughs> <laughs> that hey, one Alex. there. Alex with the Britney mic. What's your second name? Sh should we call you Alex? Alex X? No. Uh... Alex 2? <laughs> Alex 2. Yeah, other Alex. <laughs> Alex 2 is fine. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, just, just quickly, Alex, too. Um, it, no, it doesn't mean that. Yeah, it doesn't mean that. Another, I, not there is another project coming up. But that's yes. not the same as would I like to do something. Okay. Which I would. It cool. does come about every 10 or 11 years, and so one's overdue. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, please. No one does it like Alex. No one does. <laughs> You don't see it, an Alex Chandon film is completely unique. What do you think the thing to next? Right. Let's get on with this shenanigans. I said no later than eight, and it's been seven, <coughs> 50, fucking nine. So let's do this, baby. I'm going to do a countdown. Get your remotes ready. I know this is a bit old fashioned. I'm still not up with my tech and my Twitch and my stream yarding. So, um, I, like Pete, I like Peter's style. That's that's the way to do it with the two in the background. Nice oh, there's my awful face. It's massive. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like when I first saw that, I was like, why have they chosen that still? It's really horrible. Anyway, um, are we all ready to do a three, two, one play? Yep. Kevin, Stephen, Fernando, Matt. Yes. Rigzilla, Gary, Gary, Alex and Alex, and all the Alexes, and Pete. Three, two, one, play! Oh, spooky. That's Danny Filth, by the way. I'm joking. So where was this filmed? Is this the back of Jerry's? I think uh, we can all chat during this bit nice and loud. Don't worry about it. I think so. This was filmed at the back of the Creature Effects place. Was it, was it in Uxbridge, Uxbridge or yeah, something? Yeah, yeah. And then this bit was filmed in Kentish Town at the back of, um, it was uh, Jerry Judah's art studio. It's a fellow I, I used to work with doing a lot of pop promos and stuff. It's a great location. We used it for loads of stuff, didn't we? Yeah. And we managed to flag a crane. So it's actually so the camera. How can you see that floaty move? With the cameraman sitting on a big crane, so it's kind of a massive counterbalanced metal crane, uh, which he just basically got for free. So uh, we had the crane, uh, we had smoke machines, we 
had wire coming out of Jerry's uh, studio, how the lights. That, this, is, this is a real puke, isn't it? Yeah, well, this is Martin from Cradle of Filth. That's and not that, a real puke. Of course it's a real puke, yeah. Oh. He ate loads of eggs and then ketchup. He, he just said that that's something that he does on stage, so he went for it. Well, he pukes on cue. Well, he did. It took him a while. I think he had to coax it up a little bit. How many, how many takes did you do? Uh, quite a few. And he went through loads of eggs and mayonnaise and all sorts. So, yeah. Uh, I had vegetable soup. Oh, you're lucky then. You're the, you're the lucky one. You can sit in the living dead before you film where they Bit of beating up. I so bet loads of people... Feel like a massive step up from Caparella. <laughs> Alex. Sorry, say again, Emily, I didn't hear right. Did it feel like a big step up from Pervarella, like a lot of pressure, or was it was it like completely different with the tech and SFX? I think, I think it was like much less pressure. Oh, okay. Because Pervarella, it was kind of like Josh's film as well, whereas this was just kind of, it was like all, all my films, so I, I did, there wasn't anyone else I had to sort of please, uh, you know, as long as I was happy. I mean, obviously, I wanted to keep uh, Mr. Filth happy, so he didn't like fuck off and leave the production. Um, but I, I felt quite happy about it, you know. Um, we'd done a couple of the promos with Project Filth at this stage, and so it was just the same thing, you know, but just took four weeks as opposed to like three days. Um, so the relationship with Cradle of Filth, that began with the pop videos, and then yeah. you decided to do a movie collaboration. Yeah, yeah. Start with, I think, um, yeah, the, the pop videos. And then um, we realised that they were doing so well and the band at the time were pretty successful. And so we thought, wouldn't it be great if we can put Danny in a film? Um, and we basically worked out that contractually uh, he's allowed to do stuff that isn't music. Um, so we were able to get him away from the record label. And so we didn't have to cut. Is that strict? I didn't, his record contract was that strict about what he could and couldn't do. Yeah, I, I think most musicians are like, you know, people in a band that the contract can say you can't go and play music for someone else or you can't sing for another band. But but so, but we could get them to act in the film and we didn't have to pay the music for nations, like his yeah. company, any money. So. Again, Pete. So I just shouted Neil Keenan because his name came up on screen. Oh. No I only noticed that the last time I watched that, actually. Oh, and I just want to shout out uh, special effects makeups Tristan Vesalius. 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 He ended up getting me the job. Everyone was asking me on Event Horizon after this. And he ended up doing major things like he did Leonardo DiCaprio on um, The Reverend. No, that was... Uh... That's a Duncan, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. You tell me Duncan he was that. Oh, Duncan! Yeah, uh, Tristan helped Duncan, but Duncan was leading the Revenant. But Tristan and Duncan worked together quite oh, a lot. Right. Sorry. But, but Tristan was nominated for an Oscar for 1917, the war film, which mm -hmm. was just like the one continuous take. Um, so he was nominated for an Oscar for that. And I think Tristan won a few Emmys. But they're both doing really well. They're like top of their game in the effects world. And this was Tristan's His first film, very, it? very first film. Really? So you gave birth to a lot of talent. We did, yeah. Yeah, yourself it, included. You, know, you, you gave, you know, this was a lot of people. I mean, this film, a lot of it is, well, there is a story, obviously, but it's brilliant for SFX people. Oh, there I am. So young. And unfresh. <laughs> Written, edited and directed by Alex Chandon. It's very, I mean, I really like this scene in the credits. It's kind of, it, it really makes me laugh. It just works so well. This is my mum's bedroom. And we <laughs> persuaded her to let us kind of like make a little bit of a mess in the bedroom. I remember this. I remember you you saying, mum, yes. mum, can we put more blood on the walls? And your mum was, your mum was just cooking everyone dinner in the kitchen. Yeah, it was really funny. I think in the making of, uh, there's a good shot of her going, oh my God, what have you done? <laughs> I think um, I've got some comments to make on this. 
I think we should all have a drink when the inappropriate tip grab happens. Here we go. That's oh, no. All right. Oh, no, no, not yet. Not yet. It's the pulse. I'm trying not to breathe. I think, can you see I me think... breathing? Oh, here we go. Grab! I'm really trying not to react there. Everybody. I, don't... <laughs> this... I love that. What's he doing? It's just his way. <laughs> he goes into feel... like camp there. I sort of feel like this might have been done in sort of a more modern film, but not with a tip grab. I can't remember the film, but like the, the detective touches someone's corpse and there's a sort of flashback. But I think we did it be way, way better with a tip grab. And I'm surprised I'm not. Well, I'm trying not to. Makes you ask lots of questions about the detective character. <laughs> so did Emily just not blink, or did you edit them out? Or I think it's a good, it's a good bit. Emily didn't blink for ages, and then we 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 made it still and rotated it. Oh. Well, apparently, it if you try and stare, then you'll blink. You have to sort of like if you go. Like that, then you're going to want to blink. We filmed this in a pub, I forgot the name of it, but it was just off uh, Oxford Street, and it was like a gothic pub. The Intrepid Fox? No. Oh, no. Strange, okay. strange name. But we we said to the guy we want to do some filming there, but basically on Cradle of Fear, we had no money. I think the producer said we made this whole film for about £45,000. Um, after that, we paid people a little bit more, but 45000 was to get everything that you see on the screen. Um, and with this pub, there was the Ben something off Oxford Street. Um, it's not there anymore. But they said, yeah, you can use the pub from six in the morning till the time it opens, 11 o'clock. I remember it was really early shoot and we had so to get quite in a party. Yeah. And I think a couple of weekends before, we, we went down Camden to the, like, the electric ballroom, heavy metal night and stuff with loads of flyers and just went to all the freakiest people and said, if you want, if you want to be in a film, just come in, like just dress with all your makeup, like look like you look now and just come at six in the morning to this pub. So all these people just turned up at six in the morning from all around like the country. You know, I hadn't, I didn't know anything. <laughs> and we just- they're, all, we they're, genu they're genuines basically, they're not- yeah. And there's about 50, 50 people turned up. Uh, and then, yeah, we just shot from six to 11. I think we were just finishing when the first punters started coming in. <laughs> But yeah, it was really, really hectic. I seem to remember me and Danny and Sebastian, the filmmaker, didn't get much sleep the night before. In fact, we didn't get any sleep the night before. It was a, like a little bit chaotic. Yeah, I mean, there was a lot of that, no sleeping. I've got a question here. You did the video for her Ghost in the Fog, didn't you? I did, yeah. The actor that plays Kemper was in that video as well. He was, yeah, he's sadly passed away now. I think he passed away about maybe 10 years ago. And this is um, the lovely... Is it? Amber, Amber er Earl er Erickson's flat, yes. isn't it? It is Amber's flat, yeah. Amber owns an amazing place called Murder Mile Studios. I've got to list, watch this bit because um, I make a funny noise. Well, I wanted you to say ice. <laughs> Why do I go... Well, 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 but but you but you don't say anything. I just use a sound effect. I just wanted it to be a bit weird and a bit sort of trippy. Oh, I look different, didn't I? But I go. I thought I went oh, or something. So Amber's Amber was interviewed. She's a famous. Uh, she's got a famous torture dungeon, hasn't she? And she's yeah, Murder Mile Studios. I did oh, a lot okay. of filming there. So I don't know what drug it's supposed to be. Is it supposed to be an E? It, I, yeah, I'm not sure. I don't know, because we had quite a few parasites. She will have a drink. <laughs> yeah, that's, I'm going to have a drink. <laughs> oh, wow. Emily, you do look gorgeous. Oh, thank you. This is pre-breastfeeding. I'm not going to ruin it. I'm not going to ruin it. Ruin I have it. to say, if anyone wants to ask a question, I'm totally fine with it. Danny so Phelps was actually quite... He How was many, very gentlemanly, wasn't he? There was a couple of takes there, so we got a kind of a... a that was the, mo the modest take, I think. Wanted to keep it all really clean, you know, for the kids. For the kids. Can I ask them very quickly? Yeah. Um, 
a few years ago down at Fright Fest, uh, me and a friend were talking to Alex in the Phoenix, and he mentioned having additional footage that might be on the Blu-ray, um, a lot of it with yourself. And I just wondered if what was cut and what. Well, there's quite a lot to say about this scene because Alex, do you remember you shot this? It was supposed to be more demonic, and it, you you go because you know how you wanted this scene to go. Well, I was going to say we've got. Um, um, uh, sorry, it's it's just been a while, a while since I watched it, and I just want to. No, say me that. too. <laughs> I like all the tentacles. I forgot about that. Yeah, there's lots of things that you use in bringing yeah, yeah. stuff sort of edited in, isn't it? So I can see like there's a massive <laughs> penis from my first one of my first films, Drill Bit, which I've actually still got as a prop, but I didn't bring it down because I just didn't think it was in the film. Uh, but I completely forgot. But for that bit, we just got all sorts of. We got like loads of eels from Creature Effects, and uh, is there some of Dom's Dom's yeah, stuff in there? Sort of yeah, an eel from Dom Hailstone as well. Um, just just yeah, really odd bits. But just to answer um, Peter's question as well, um, there wasn't wasn't anything really cut out. It, there was just alter, uh, alternate takes of stuff, or like longer takes of stuff. So like nothing was really cut out. It's just that we had to just cut stuff for time, really. Um, so I mean, obviously, there's probably like hours more stuff of Emily in the shower. <laughs> <laughs> But whether or not that will make it onto the Blu-ray, I don't know. You know, like <laughs> I can chat to Emily about it. But I don't, so with, there isn't a Blu-ray of this, is there? No. Yeah. I, don't know, I don't know if Arrow to put one out. I'm not quite there sure. There is one. Yeah, there's a Blu-ray. There is. Okay. I I, just, I, this is one of my favourite shots. Yeah, I really like this shot as well. I just like this bit. It's a bit of a homage to Psycho, isn't it? Really, it is. I love that. I love that shot of her. But also, I'd like to say that I was actually really innocent at this point. Um, in terms of, I didn't know. I should have had my nails painted, and nobody said, "Oh, paint your nails." Like my think... toenails. nails, and I had blisters. That, that's the sort of thing an actress thinks about. But um, I persuade, like because you weren't sure about this scene because it's really gratuitous. But I sold it to you because it was like, it's going to be nasty. You know, you're scratching yourself. I, and, yeah, and I really was trying to yeah. hurt myself. But it, it's, it's um, I mean, it's very gratuitous, Emily. I'm just so pleased you did it because it, it's oh, a great, a great scene. You know, here's another little fact. Um, Jake West hated <laughs> the fact that I went fully nude for you. He kept saying, What's all this with you go nude for Alex and not me? And I was like, no, I just changed. But, but the thing is, like, we kept it. I mean, because we didn't want to show, and we didn't want to. I didn't want to show like sort of full full nudity in the film. Yeah. The, like, that shower scene. There's just one bit I remember because I, I said, don't mind. I don't mind the shower scene at all. I mean, no, 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 it's cool. It's I another mean, thing. Like, why did I wear those stupid shoes? I should have been wearing these. Oh, uh, you're right. Yeah, but. Because I remember you yeah, added no flip-flops and I'm wearing sandals, but anyway. There's no way you could have walked as fast as like, you know, when we had you kind of running through Oxford Street. I, I love think, this bit. Um, I mean, this whole sequence, again, did it, we didn't pay any money. We didn't ask for any, we didn't pay any money to let any council to shoot anywhere. And we didn't ask for any permission to shoot anywhere. How did you do that effect? I really like it. That's just uh, with a bit of um, fishing wire, moving that. Well, just That's really cool. Yeah, we're stuck it's in all room. around Soho and Oxford Street. I would like yeah, so to say really um, quickly. So, so <laughs> just to say, so that's me, that's me. The the producer said, like basically, like I said, this is what we're going to do. It was me and a steady cam and Emily, just three of us. And I said, we're just going to walk up Oxford Street and just shoot it. And he goes, well, you can't do it like sort of officially on the film thing because it's just too dodgy. But if you guys just go and do it and bring the footage back. So we just, I, I just love this day so much. It was Lovely. like. Is it, were you thinking Jacob's Ladder? Yeah, totally. Yeah, I was so inspired. That's what I think when I see, and can I just really quickly say, oh, I've got, I don't want to ruin the, I had to do, this is what, this is how guerrilla filmmaking it was. So the guys were on the other side of Oxford Street and I had to be on my own and getting, Alex just said, just get freaked out at people. So there were poor passers-by and I was every now and then, 
but that that's his face. I'm just gonna let you have that moment. Every now and then I had to go <laughs> like that and I had to like jump at people. So everyone thought I was a raving loony walking down Oxford Street. That, and no no, no mobile phone no, no mobile phones. That probably showed was the uh, was the that was on the face of the actor uh, Adrian. Um and it was before so I mean it's not really CGI, it was like a composite shot. So we just comped it into the actor and we just basically filmed this doing this and then the actor doing that and then just kind of added, added it together. But it looks so effective. Like really It really does. That's one of my favourite effects. I mean, I've met Adrian and it was just <laughs> lovely to see that. Right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's, I mean, so this, is, this is made by Tristan um, and it's still, I mean, I don't know if you can see, it's kind of, it's kind of breaking down a little bit. But I'm so glad you've kept them. Yeah, I can't, so cool. I can't chuck this stuff away, man. But Alex, you're really yeah. creative because you make stuff as well, don't you? You made a I, few things. I don't really, no, I don't, I'm creative on the computer, so I do, I do all my own comp compositing effects and stuff like that. So I so thought when, you made Spider Baby. Oh, no, no, that was Cliff uh, at Creature Effects and Dom and, um, I don't they, do any, I don't do any of the making the special effects. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, that's not. That's I not remember um, this is the only time Alex got annoyed with us. Was it? <laughs> I remember, because me and um, Melissa. Melissa, I had sort of learnt my lines, but do you remember we hadn't quite remembered all our lines? We had to go on the roof and right. very. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I remember can't remember that. I think I was probably annoyed because so this is my brother's um, girlfriend at the time's flat, Sabrina's flat. And my brother just got the right hump that we were that we were there, and he was like, "You got to tell him to fuck off," you know. What I mean, you can't. It's like charge him some money, you know. He was going, "I can't believe you're letting them here for free." So I, I sort of felt under pressure that we we had to be out of here. Uh, um, so I mean, that might have been why I'm pissed. I was I was. No, I think off. you had every right to be. I remember. I think I'd learnt my lines. I'd learnt most of them, and I and. Um, I will definitely add, and I, I'm not joking here, at the time of shooting this, I was working on bits as well, I think, in in Glasgow. And I was going, I was suffering insomnia, which went on for about 20 years, in a big way. So this scene, the night before, which is another reason my I was finding it hard to remember all my lines, I hadn't slept. And I but I do think it adds to it. So it I'm genuine, I'm, I am genuinely a little bit confused and upset in this scene because I hadn't um, slept for about 40 hours or something weird because that was a regular thing when I was young. There was too many drugs. I, 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 I just noticed in that scene, and also, I mean, all through the sequence, you walk in, like these days you couldn't get away with like having diet coping shot having any of those shops in shot, like any of the names, because companies wouldn't want to be associated with this, like Pizza Hut wouldn't want to be associated with this film. But we were just lucky. We just, we didn't get any insurance covering in case we got sued. Uh, and I think it's too late now for anyone to sue us, I hope. I should have paid you for having it in shot. <laughs> I just don't think Pizza Hut want that as their- uh, Maybe not. Maybe their advert. Pizza Face. Pizza Face. Yeah. I That's do recommend- Jan's the only person we made as a monster without makeup, just as a kind of joke. <laughs> we just said, just do a silly face. <laughs> so this the is shirt you were wearing, I do remember you wearing that in bits. So, what shirt? That one. The shirt, the red one, the red spiral. No, the red spiral shirt. Oh when yeah. You were walking. That's yeah. I've seen you wear that in bits. Yeah. I did, yeah. I was working on bits and this at the same time. And so I was definitely all over the place. So I've got a confession to make, and that is that I own those panties that you're wearing. <laughs> <laughs> on the, on the day I was shooting uh, the making of, and uh, they get very bloody and messy, and oh, you're, yeah. you're all fucked off to shoot something else. And so I was left to tidy up a bit. And so. Have you still you got it? Man, yeah. <laughs> Do you wear them? I don't. They're in the bottom of a prop box rather boringly, but I had to wash them. They got really bloody and they would have rotted otherwise, you know. But, well, uh, well, they, I, might, they might, because I remember we got about five pairs because we had a pair on the on the dummy and we had some stunt pairs because of the blood. So 
I mean, oh, I probably got maybe yeah. explain that. So obviously, that's real. I mean, so that, that, that's, that's, that's real. I mean, it was a really amazing. If this was a, a Cliff Wallace uh, creature effects, and it was the first time I'd done. We did like a full body cast of Emily. Um, that was the. Uh, that, I guess that was the most expensive expensive thing we paid for on the whole shoot was the effects and the silicone itself was like I think just eight hundred pounds for the silicone. Wow! But it's so amazing when it cuts to the fake chest. It still freaks me out, like just how good it is. It's really and, good. So it's. A I whole, like this bit because you're saying that we have to go. No, go lower, a bit lower. <laughs> I'm, I'm just trying to. I'm just trying to think where where your torso is. Because it was hanging up on the wall of my old house for like years and years and years. Was it? Oh, yeah. I love this. Yeah, I love that. That's too. a Tristram effect, wasn't it? Yeah, that's brilliant. So that that's obviously the silly. No all of a sudden. And Alex is behind the camera with a syringe for the blood. He always used to do this. Oh yeah. So she gets a mouthful in a sec, and yeah. that's that's Alex doing that. Oh, I just love this scene so much. I definitely do. I, I really want to do another really gory film because it's kind of it's so over the top. It's kind of funny. Yeah. I I realised I love being covered in in general fluids, human fluids. <laughs> oh, after okay. this, Melissa. So she was totally freaked out during this. Yeah, she yeah. just really. She was properly. Yeah, that's... <laughs> <laughs> just got her right in the face. In the mouth. <laughs> so we've got the baby. Oh yeah, we showed you. Did we show you a bit of the baby? Oh, yeah. we, we're so lucky to have the real prop here, and it's not been seen since the film was made. I think there's a little baby there. This guy is he's kind of melted. It's like the scene from Alien is it three or four, where there's all these aliens in jars. This is what it's inspired like. by obviously like Alien and the Thing and stuff. Anyone got any questions at this point? You're welcome. You're all welcome to ask. That's Alex's mum in the background there, just oh, yeah. going out shot. Yeah, that's my mum just there going out shot there. Okay, I mean this just cracks me up. This was just an office that someone said we can use for free for a couple of hours, and, and we just, just went in there and just stuck up the all oh, photocopied pictures that we'd got off online of sort of. <laughs> freaky criminals and uh and we just got a, like uh, so in the background is nick grosso and nico rilla trying to be like sort of miami vice detectives nico yeah, the the sunglasses. Producer. <laughs> the <producer>. <laughs> and that's my mum on the left oh i think mary did more on this film than than i did you know she was cook she yeah. did all the cooking yeah she, she did all the, all the catering yeah she did the catering on the inbred as well. I miss her cooking, man. I miss, I miss her as well. I miss her, I miss her, her cooking well, yeah. more, really. Rest in peace, man. Can I can I ask you something? Who was that? Who was that? Uh, are you here? Hi, Fernando. Fernando. Yeah. Hi, Fernando. Uh, Please ask away. Hi. Okay. Uh, Alex mentioned inbred. Uh, a few years ago, Alex went to Portugal to oh, promote yeah. his movie. I know. I don't know if he remembers me because because I I saw the poster in Bread directed by Alex Chandon and I, I and I and I wondered oh it's the same Alex Chandon that directed Cradle of Fear let me ask him and well I talked to him and did he did made the film he said something that made me thought think that uh, Danny Filth uh, made him lose years of his life. <laughs> and I, I wondered what he meant about that. Is Danny Phil something, uh, someone uh, hard to work with? Uh, I mean, yeah, well done, Fernando, for remembering. Because, um, <laughs> yeah, I'm sure I've, I've been through loads of festivals just going like, what a fucking wanker he was. But he, I mean, Danny was lovely when, we, when I worked with him. When I did the videos, he was just genuinely really nice. Um, <laughs> but, but, but then there was a they signed to Sony. And they, we did all this stuff for free and, you know, and we said, like, if you make it big, you know, remember us. And he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And they signed to Sony in the very first video. They used another director called Wiz. I, I didn't even know about it until someone, or well, I read it in Metal Hammer. And I rang up Danny and then Danny just sort of ghosted me. And it was like, mate, just, 
I just wanted to know what was going on. So he uses people up to a point and then, you know, uh, does his own thing. So that that just annoys me. I know I can't, I'd like to talk to Danny now and just say hi, because, you know, we've got on so well. I went to the beach with his family. So funny. Like, Danny wore all the same leather gear and big boots <laughs> when we went to the seaside. It was, it was just so funny. Because he constantly so, in those boots. Because he's yeah, well, very small, isn't he? He's tiny. He's tiny, so, yeah. He, Every yeah. time we went out and about, he'd put on... You know, like if we're going to count, you had to have to put everything, even the contacts. It's like, mate, you know, we're just going for breakfast. But it's like, uh, it's just his look. But when he was at home, it was kind of much, much more relaxed. I've got a really funny thing to say about Danny, but maybe later on after I've had another pint. But it's just something that no one knows. And it's like, it's very funny. Um, but I, I do generally, I was very fond of Danny. And I, I think we will chat again. Um, but yes, Fernando, he, he did do my head in completely. <laughs> and also, uh, Fernando, weirdly enough, I so I've got a um, a tenant living with me who, who works at the um, English National Opera. He's the head of the sound, and uh, his name's George, and he's from Portugal as well. Um, he just went back to Lisbon yesterday. Otherwise, he would have come and said hello and spoken some Portuguese with you. Mm-hmm. Oh, thank you. Now, as I say, Emily will tell you I've. I'm quite frequent at doing all the Cradle of Filth meet and greets, the signings and all that. And I met Danny last year and Stuart. he's still really well. Is he, is he doing all right? Hi, Stuart. He's doing well. Um, hey, Alex. Uh, yeah, he's doing well there. A lot of it is, though, he's got a new girlfriend now, a tattooist in Ipswich. And... Oh, right, okay basically dotes on hair and some of the stuff you read on Facebook where I was like he's a human being and it's like oh yeah I really really miss my girlfriend la la etc and it's like yeah yeah stuff yeah stuff like that well I mean like if you if you if you see my chat in Stuart you know tell him that you know I honestly said hello I mean I know I called him a wanker at the time you know like but he, he was a little bit but you know I'm, I'll say hello and you know if he wants to have a chat about stuff you know it'd be nice just to catch up I also yeah, him... last time Emily said, uh, mention Emily, and it's like, yeah, he remembers. And it's like, how could he forget Emily? <laughs> it's... it's only a couple of days that, uh, I, I mean, day or two that I was <laughs> working with um, Danny, and he was, um, I thought he was quite shy. He, to me, he was quite shy. He, he was just, like, the, the he scene with me, you, I, I, I remember gonna... him, he had all these big rings on, and over my boobs, he was like, where can I go? Where, like, does it hurt? Shall I go here? Shall I, like, he was quite... Um... These are the, the, big ring, the big rings that you had on. A, a, lot of them were, a lot of them were prop rings that were made. So they had, uh, oh, it's like, so that's protected because it's got like real um, scalpels on the end of the rings. So you, some, someone made all these very weird rings. Oh, but... they're sort of like Freddy Krueger rings. Yeah, sort of. Yeah. Oh, Alex, this is amazing! You brought all this. Thank you. That, that's Danny's yeah, ring. In fact, you'll, I think you'll see them in this scene here. Yeah. So these are the rings he's wearing now, which is good timing. So, oh yeah, good timing indeed. So, mm. um, a bit of storyline catch up. Oh, oh yeah, I mean, I, I, I not need to <laughs> clarification on this. Is Danny Filth the servant of Temper? I should uh, know. Well, I absolutely love the way people have read their own, like, made up their own interpretations of stuff. Like so I read a review, someone said that, so that Kemper's cell that we saw Kemper in, because um, I, I was going to say a little story about how we made that as well. You know, everything was like just pretty low budget and we went for it. But the reason it was designed like that was more out of necessity rather than a thought process, which is the easiest way to get it done quickly. But someone said the way we did the padded cell like it represents the human brain and the cerebellum. And it's like, and it's like, I just love the way people kind of invent their own stories about the film. I love going but, deep. And that's great. You I just, love that. that. There's some terrible compositing going on there. This is where I used to live. This is yeah. my shot at my flat. Yeah, that's that's the yeah. um but um uh what was the last thing you were saying about the um uh, the You're about the inter- the oh, yes, the inter- oh, the inter- so, uh, but to answer your question, I, did, I think in the film he's supposed to be Kemper's son, but whether or not he's this, uh, to be honest, I, 
I don't really know. It's, it's, it's a little ambiguous, isn't it? Yeah, I, don't know. I, I thought it's. So it's, he's not Satan. I always think he's a, a spawn of Satan. I kind of thought he just had powers. You know what I mean? Like you know, maybe he just did the Alistair Crowley shit and you know raised a few demons to help him along. You know, now and again. Alistair Crawley. Alistair Crawley. <laughs> <laughs> he lives in my town where he lived in. He, he's Norwich. Ha- ha- Hastings, Norwich, no. No, it's Hastings. Alice, Hastings is famous for Alistair Crowley. Oh, right, yeah, yeah. Um, and now we have the lovely Emma Rice, who. Emma. And wasn't that Billy mm. Tinsor's ex? Yeah, 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 yeah. Rebecca. Uh, Rebecca, isn't it? Yeah, Rebecca oh. Eden. We actually were with her a couple of years ago when we went to Spain <laughs> to one of his crazy parties. And Rebecca was is still doing go-go dancing. Yeah, yeah. She looks great. She looks great, yeah. And so this house is the producer, Eddie's house. And he let us fuck up his front. He just let us, you know, go uh, distress everything with paint that we rubbed off. So I worked on Lock, lock Stock and Two Smoking Barrels as art department. Oh, and we did a lot of stuff like we'd make a, a nice uh, shop front look really shitty and old with like water-based paint that you then just wash off later on. So I was kind of always on top of the art department stuff, made sure everything looked really good. So this is actually quite a posh, a posh house where you live, but the bathroom, uh, it, you know, we just made it look really, really horrible. Yeah. Knowing, knowing Eddie, he probably he did some, it. he's an accountant, probably did some tax thing where he got his entire place redecorated sort of. Yeah. But I was going to say, so what the room they end, they end up, the girls end up in is actually the top, room at my uh, nan's house. I, mean, like I love the fact that you just <laughs> use your mum and your nan. But, yeah, well, but I mean, and, and again, it just shows on a low budget, you know, just you've just got to use what you've got. Like Eddie's place was great for the staircase, <laughs> but it wasn't good for the room. So then, mm. you know, like my nan's house had a top room full of really old shit. Like we didn't do any set dressing in there, which is full of old stuff from olden days. Um, so again, it was great. Um, you know, there are a lot of filmmakers who now, now it's ironic. Now, forty-five thousand would probably be considered quite a good budget because expectations. What now? Well, because oh. text changed so much. People are making films quite. I mean, obviously, in an official film, they're still spending millions. But on a low budget film, if you say it was forty-five thousand, that's Probably considered all I, right. I mean, I don't know anyone that's making features for forty-five thousand. No, I, I just don't think that's happening. Uh, um, well, I think some people are doing them so simply, aren't they? With found footage, with the found. I footage. mean, I see. I don't watch a lot of horror films these days because they're just mostly really shit. But see, and I think a good. I don't know. I mean, I I've not seen a good horror film that cost less than. 50 grand for so many years now. The other thing is that it's just, it's best not to talk about budget because if someone finds out you made a film for cheap, they'll offer you less money for the next No, I know, it's a real issue. So we always try to sort of big up what we spent. um, Yeah. yeah, Just so they wouldn't wouldn't try and lowball you on the next film. Yeah, I think what I don't realise is that a director and a producer, they're thinking career they're not thinking, wow, I can do this for no money, therefore you should give me no money for my next project. They they want the opposite. Whereas but I mean, but, but fans often think, wow, the, well done. The thing is something, like, I wouldn't want to make a film where we didn't pay anyone. And like, I've never been comfortable not paying people. So like, even though you, you all got paid like pretty shitty money on this, but we made sure everyone had food, fair. I got paid after the film as well, though. I got yeah, some, yes. um, well, well, that's, I, I think on this uh, one, we, we offered, so that, that's that's why we managed to shoot it on 45, but with all the deferrals, you know, so basically we paid out, I think it was 120 grand, with, uh-huh. and that was paying paying wages after the that's film was made. Executed. So it was, you know, so, and it was great that we did actually pay pay people. <laughs> Because um, again, a lot of films say they'll give you deferrals, but you just never, you never see anything. Yeah, because you have to trust them. I've had people saying. Oh, another prop. Another prop coming up. Another prop. So, prop. Prop. so uh, oh, hang on, we're, 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 we're jumping the gun a bit. There's the teeth. No, no there's the teeth. Uh, those are the teeth that's just said, old man's teeth. Oh. Oh. Wear them. Oh. Uh. No. Ah! <laughs> you still got the old man teeth. Why have they got a battery pack? Oh, 
Okay, that is his hearing aid. That doesn't happen yet. <laughs> yeah, that doesn't happen yet. It happens later. Right <clears throat> and there's, there's something stuck on it. I'm not sure what it is. Don't know, don't touch it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, bless you, Alex. So, yeah, this is in my granny's house and all this stuff that you're seeing, all the props, that's kind of, that just what was all in the house. The it's tin. Like stuff. Oh, this is the tin. I've yeah. got all the tin. Oh, so... And it's still got... Money. Money. <laughs> money. Is it printed money? Okay, so but we've got to say, um, rest in peace, Al Stokes. Unfortunately, was it... Was... Within the last year, Al Stokes, his band, the old man, passed on, so... Uh... Cheers, Al. Oh. Cheers, Al. Yeah. Aww. Probably most famous for, uh, well, Come to Daddy video. To Daddy, yeah. The Apex Twin. Really? Oh, wow. He plays the creature in that. It looks incredible, yeah. So that's when I first saw him, actually. <clears throat> Love that show. Can I ask, Alex, because you wrote, this is all fresh from you, your mind. What, how many different segments are there? Not the wraparound, is it five? I think so. Yeah, that's something I didn't say at the start when I introduced it, that, you know, I grew up loving, like, amicus, uh, like, portmanteau movies, mm -hmm. you know, that kind of thing, like, sort of Tales from the Crypt and Asylum. And so I really wanted to homage those films where they've got stories, but there's a wraparound story. And this was before VH1 and everything, wasn't it? Oh, yeah, but and a lot of those films, they don't really bother with a good wraparound story. You know, or, or blood and tits, you know, that's right. <laughs> but, but you know, like, so, uh, you know, I've got so many favorites, you know, like Creep Show as well was a massive. Mm. In fact, we the sound effect here is Creep from Creep Show. It's here. And he jumps up. I was going to ask though, what in oh, what inspired the different Yay. themes of the um segments because they're all sort of slight morals aren't they they usually there's usually yeah, a yeah. Well, that's, that, that's that with the with the with the amicus films the tales from the crypt um is it Doctor, uh, i can't remember there's loads of dr terror's house of horror yeah, or Terror. Of horror there's the like one that. on the train they're all kind of yeah morality tales like yeah the, the people that die they did do something wrong sort of thing yeah so i and chose the wrong man to shag. Well, I don't know if that's yeah. a good but... <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, 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 yeah, I think you... Disgusting. You were a bit easy. Hi, <laughs> yeah, and these are stealing. I'm yeah, stealing. Uh, without giving too much away, there's a sort of aspect that people get what they deserve. Yeah. Ah. Oh. I know I asked for it. No. <laughs> yeah, I've got one. <laughs> I've always... He won't die, which is ironic because he's actually died now. I should have watched this last night because I'm really, I, I'm just enjoying watching it. That's all right, Alex. <laughs> so I think... was, this was the first time that I did anything on, I wasn't using After Effects yet. So I did, I did some digital effects on this, but I did it with Photoshop. Wow. So uh, there's one bit where Danny drinks the gut, but there's another bit there when she's hitting his face. Um, and he, and the blood's coming out, but it's kind of just it's done like frame by frame in film strip and Photoshop, or just like a really rough uh, composite in Premiere. So this was before I was using After Effects. So I'm amazed some some of it holds up so well. But I mean, right now again, if you've seen Inbred, I think like my composite work, um, it's just like a million times better. You know, to some really. Those who don't know what's composite work. Oh, we like this scene. Should I not ruin it? Two girls in a bloodbath. Uh, well, uh, com compositing is basically you, you've got two scenes. You could have a sky and a house, and you put the sky behind the house. So you're oh. basically with compositing, you're dealing with real elements that have been filmed. No one's listening, Al. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> As opposed to like CGI is like something created, but uh, compositing. Oh, okay. I never knew that. Okay. Yeah. So compositing is like so two things that you filmed in real life, and you put them together. So it's really important to match the lighting and the angle and that kind of thing. Um, and it involves lots of, it's called rotoscoping, where you've got to draw around objects frame by frame. And it's, it's a nightmare job. And it, I mean, like all the massive movies, they've got about maybe 100 people rotoscoping, like a six second scene in the Marvel movies uh, to, to literally take each frame of the person. So we'll, 
I'm doing basic rotoscoping and compositing in inbred. And, I, and then in this film, there's just the most basic uh, stuff done in Photoshop and film strip. Was the shot of the old man having his face stabbed with the baking oh, yeah. from the mouth of composite too? Well, well, that was it was basically like half a knife, uh, which really stabbed him in the cheek. And then I just in Photoshop, yeah, I just brought out the end. Did a few frames of yeah, a couple yeah, of yeah. frames of the blade coming out of the mouth. But we had the blood tube in the hand, and then we just basically, if that was the, just sort of whacked it into into this thing. <laughs> I, can Alex, I add something? I got, sorry, so can I add something? Yeah. Yes, go okay. for You know the expression B movies. Oh yeah, yeah. My opinion is the B stands for boobs. Boobs, yeah. Boobs and blood. blood. <laughs> it's either or. Boobs, Pre blood. Preferably, preferably both. I think uh budget, lack of. Yeah. <laughs> boobs, blood on a budget. With that in mind, <laughs> Alex, that's a good, that's a good quite swiftly onto. Um, uh, yeah, no, that's, no, Emily, my, my book's going to be called Boobs, Blood, and On a Budget. On a Budget. <laughs> Boobs and Blood on a Budget. Oh my God. <laughs> that's good. Especially yeah. in this stupid, boring, woke culture. Anyway. Um, Fuck the wokies. Shh. This isn't political, oh right? my god, it's so difficult. You can't. I'm not. I'm not even going to go there. But you, you just can't say anything right. I, I wanted to ask though because. Um, can I just say? Um, so can I just say? So I use the still of Emily. Well, well, basically, oh. the only bit of Emily that isn't still is where the blood's coming. But that was just done in Photoshop, and just to show how easy it is to do something. Well, Emma, you mean Emma? Oh, oh, sorry, sorry, Emma. Emma, yeah. So basically, everything I just I locked it off, and it just it's a still frame, and then I just left a little bit around her mouth with the blood moving, and it oh. just looks it looks so cool. Other examples of that are exteriors of the doctor's office and the asylum, which is just a still that you added a bit of smoky smoke. type something. It's really clever. See, oh, she's not doing well out of stealing. Not you. <laughs> Can I ask, so um, in terms of who you like to work with, so did you largely work with people that you liked and knew as opposed to casting people you didn't know? Well, on, on, on this film? Cradle, yeah. Because you'd already, you, you knew me from Perverella. Yeah, I, just, I mean, I, I knew me, like, so Inbred was the first film where I got, I mean, no offence to you, Emily, but where I've got proper actors. She's in it. What are you talking about? <laughs> no, oh, yeah. She's only in the a little bit. <laughs> I'm in the. I'm a. I'm a, a cameo. She does a, a cameo, but um, on on Cradle, uh, it was it, it was the first time that I'd done castings for people that I didn't know, uh, so it was a bit weird. But because we had no money, and also I didn't feel that I could approach. What I realised on Inbred is if you've got a decent script, you can just approach anyone i mean that's how we got joe hartley and then she got a lot of love joe out. hartley she's everywhere now isn't she yeah well yeah she works with ricky gervais mm. and, yeah, yeah. and um a lot of fem female comedy and stuff well, she was super friendly with me loads of you guys. <laughs> but um i i, I didn't I, I mean i i did i don't think i had the confidence when i did <laughs> this film to kind of approach you know like uh sort of you know, mainstream uh, actors. So it was going with people that I knew, but also, but people that I knew could do it. You know what I mean? I don't think there's anyone really shit in this film, like acting wise, compared and to I like my- With a film like this, I know a lot of directors have said, obviously you want good actors, but you need to know that they're sort of, I don't like saying game, because that sounds a bit cheap, but you need to, you need, you need the atmosphere on set to be a certain atmosphere and you need yeah. it to be really up for stuff, including stuff that's not particularly comfortable or great fun. So oh. some people like to work with people, but you see it all the time, don't you? Even Tim Burton, they work with regular people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, sometimes that's based on, I guess, you know, if you've got no money, it's based on like necessity, but, um, but not always. Like, but, but like a professional actor would be happy kind of mucking in on this as long as you looked after him. 
you know so as long as as long as they've got food somewhere to go and chill out we didn't really have that we couldn't really offer we couldn't offer a level of comfort you know so we we had to just go with people we knew i guess there so, was there was some comfort there it was definitely comfort. a step up from from the previous stuff yeah there yeah. would be somewhere that people could chill out your mum would cook yeah there were a couple of people whose job it was to make sure that people were okay yeah whereas before yeah sort of uh, but I, I yeah i think to make it safe i did want people that i knew could handle this stuff and like getting covered in blood and you know that with really long days you know we really pushed some of the hours i think especially in this in fact when we did this story we didn't shoot the stories in order but this was three weeks into a four-week shoot and uh, things were just breaking down mostly between me and the cameraman because he was italian uh and he, his english wasn't that brilliant but there's a, what it was the bit just previously when they're walking up the, the stairs and i said i want it to be silhouette and he and he just did it in shadow and i was like you yeah, know silhouette and he's like yeah they're just silhouette and it's a shadow and it's just a language different, but basically I, I told him to fuck off and he walked off set. And the, the producer, the line producer, Siska, just called me out and said, I'm, I'm going to shut everything down for a week. Everyone needs a rest. It was- Hey, can I just cheer that last shot? It's just, it's all there. There's the cover of your book. But, but yeah, so we actually stopped filming for a week. We did three weeks and just insane. Um, how, um, long did, how long did the whole shoot take? It was sort of four. It was four weeks with the big crew, and then I probably did about another five days of pickups. Just you know, literally just me and a camera. Um, it's about normalism. Things. That's about when I've always. Whenever I've done a feature, it's like yeah, four weeks, five weeks, that kind of thing. They say it's like trying to get sort of three, five minutes in a, in in the can a day. You know, so it's. No, but now people are saying, oh yeah, we shot it in ten days or twelve days. That's what I mean. Like everything's become. Everything's become streamlined and expectations are a lot yeah. higher now because well, you can't do effects and you can't do stuff. No, like no, you can't do you yeah. can't do good good effects. That I mean, and, and that's what a lot of films get wrong. They don't schedule time for the effects. It's like yeah, we put the effect. We'll do the effects at the end of the day, uh, and all the, all the effects people. It's still happening now, like um, on big budget films. Can I just say that in a film full of brutal effects, this is the most brutal effect. I still don't know how you did it. Oh, so really... Again, I did it in Photoshop. It's just a couple of frames. Wow. But so this is inspired by Last House on the Left. I'm pretty sure in Wes Craven's Last House on the Left, there's a scene uh, and you don't see it happen, but you just see the chisel go onto the T and it just cuts, that... it, it, it cuts I, I, I haven't been this. watching. This is the detective being haunted. Yes. Yeah. Or it kind of had like Kemper's infected his dream sort of thing. Ah. Uh. Kemper is well cast. He looks a bit like Bob from Twin Peaks. Mm. He's amazing. I, I, so, like what you were saying oh, about. Oh, oh, oh. Get out. So that, that time, that was Photoshop, just like moving it for three frames, I think, moving the two. It's brilliant, really effective. And the sound effect. And an old phone. People, <laughs> kids don't know how to use these these days. It's just a mystery to them. <laughs> and um, so. Um, Edmund, I think, is still around, still acting. And he was in the best fan Judge Dredd movie. I think it's called Judge Misty, if you uh, look it up on YouTube. And he plays a, a brilliant judge. And it's an amazing costume, amazing uh, lawgiver bike. And it's the best kind of representation of Judge Dredd, I reckon. Uh, and Edmund would love to be in a film. I mean, a lot of these people have said they'd love to be in a film again. I mean, one reason I'd like to work with you again, Alex. I'm going to open the floor up because um, I, because we're not in a... Well, they're all key bits, but we're not in a, a, a new segment yet. So is there any, does anyone have anything they want to ask Alex? It could be generic. You could ask me or Alex. I do. I do, I do. You can, I mean, ask me anything at any time. I'll just stop talking, you know. Okay. It's we really still have uh, uh, campers... Um, mask oh. uh, that prop that you use in the head, yeah, to prevent him from looking at the people, yeah, yeah. Do you still yeah, have I, it? I got, well, I thought I did, I, went, I was looking for it today. Um, so there's a couple of things I, I can't remember like where I put them. Um, but yeah, I, I did have that. Um, because it was made by a friend of mine again for like no money, but you know, she she was doing fashion design. So I explained what I wanted and she came up with that and it was, it was way more than I expected. It looks amazing. Mm. 
So why is he crossing oh. names off the list? Is he getting revenge? Yeah. Yes. So these are the people that put put him away. So uh, this sequence. So uh, there's uh, on uh, IMDb. There's a comment that saying, "Yeah, the film is all right, but that the scene with a really shit animatronic cat, and it, it's not. It's like it's my <laughs> cat." Hey, well, it, listen, we should people. You don't fuck with cats, as the film goes. Yeah, that is so, quite it's a really clever mixture of Al's love. Was it Kato? Kato, yeah. Kato and a and a a prop knife, a prop cat. But at no, no, no time was there's no there's no prop cat. It's all Kato. That, that, don't be stupid. You're no, gonna get what you down on the internet, right? I've gone. <laughs> Please say it's a prop cat. There's no. Sorry, there is. I'm, there wasn't. No, there wasn't. It wasn't. I think Alex is forgetting. But, but it was Kato. This is a very good effect. What's he doing? No cats were harmed. That's no, yeah, no one was harmed. Kato's used, used to playing rough. So that's my Photoshop effect that I'm was saying. That Dan, was that a clever reverse shot? That's, that's like a composite. Like the tray and Danny were filmed at two different times. And and the, the tray's on a tripod. So it always stays in the same place. So we poured the shit off the tray. And then Danny got in there. And uh, <laughs> together. Um, I've got a question. Did Danny did Danny find any of your film um, like a step up from what he does on stage? Did any, did any of it disturb him, or was it was, was there anything he said no to, or was he game for everything? <laughs> yeah, well, he was pretty up for it, wasn't he? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah but he, he objected to the scene. I wanted I wanted him to get his cock out, and you know, <laughs> no, I didn't. Um, yeah, no. Danny really loved it. I think, look, because you, you touched on it earlier on, I think the only stuff that made Danny feel awkward, and it was the same with me when I first like filmed a sex scene, I think it was on Perverella, uh, um, was it with you and, and Eileen? But me, I, felt, I, I felt so yeah. awkward. And it's only because you two were really, just made me feel relaxed. And I've got the same feeling with Danny doing a sex scene with you. It's a kind of weird thing to film, but everything else. I, I wouldn't call it a sex scene. It didn't feel, because there's a, Filming, um, I would say filming a real sex scene is far more awkward than filming um Yeah, yeah. I just think crazy, you know, nasty or a fantasy sex yeah. scene. Yeah. But if you've if you've never been in that sort of film environment, it's so different to being on stage. It's like a lot more weird, you know what I mean? On stage like that Danny can be on stage with topless dancers and he's fine, but on a sort of film environment, I, I mean I always find that it's I'm still not completely used to it. And I know, I know nowadays they've got like these, uh, what do you call it, um, people there for sex scenes to make sure everyone's comfortable. We never really did that, you know. I just hope people... No, but we did do closed sets, I think. Yeah, we, we did closed sets and you were comfortable. But, I, you know, it's the crew. It's like... It's, I, I was always running around. That's my problem. Because I remember, um, <laughs> and I, I'm going to say this now, it's, it's about a different film, but it's about Pavarella. But I remember... Um, uh, sorry, I'm watching the film. Uh, there was an interview with you about Pervarella, and you said Emily is pretty much Pervarella, where whether she's on or off set. And for me, that was the biggest compliment because I oh. just thought that I embodied her complete. I really did want to embody her. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. Um, I genuinely just felt very comfortable. Maybe you guys made me feel comfortable. I don't know, but I genuinely felt comfortable just sort of like feeling oh. free. Um, you do need things like closed sets. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, a little bit of respect. You know, but, on Pervarella, um, Josh, uh, you know, was part of the, you feeling really comfortable because that's kind of his, that was his world, you know. Um, they just expect I, it as well. Like, yeah. I remember him just giving me diamond whites. Quite <laughs> that's it. Uh, that, that sounds awful. Hey, he didn't give me diamond whites all the time, but yeah, like it's my first... diamond whites aren't an ecstasy. It's like uh, it's cider, isn't a strong, it? Strong, very strong. The first really <laughs> strong cider on the market. Hey, yeah. okay, so this scene of Danny, this was a pickup, and he got really fat. So I had to squeeze the image to make him. Fat. I had to make him look thinner. How, get... With... well, how quick did he get fat? Because Danny puts on weight really quickly. He's one of those people that fluctuates. So whenever he goes on tour, you know, he gets skinny. Did you know that's got... shit? So you're going to have the cat lovers after you. You're going to have the <laughs> uh... cradle fans after you. <clears throat> or do you oh, see a photo? Neil, Neil, Neil! Richard! Neil, Neil, Neil! 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 Neil,
Rich O'Neill with the lovely Eileen Daly. Everybody was hoping that I had Eileen Daly as a guest as well. I don't think she'd be up for it. I, we can do, I mean, like, we can do another. I, I'm sort of feeling that I'm missing talking about loads of stuff because I'm just enjoying chatting about stuff. There's so much I could talk about in every scene. About That's how... good, Alex. No, I know, yeah, please I know, do. This is brilliant. Not enough time to do it. I'll but... let you roll. I'll let you roll. No, no, no. But I'm just saying, like, re, you know, do another one. I'll get Eileen in one day or something like that. If she does. She does, yeah. She's gone. She, yeah, she's doing her own thing. So here we have. Um, um, Alex, why don't you sum up this scene for us quickly for anyone oh, on YouTube who doesn't oh. know. Well, again, we did this on no money, which I just find insane. I love this scene. We, we literally just strapped a video camera onto the front of the... That's Louis Porsche. So the actor that's got one leg... He, Don't give anything away, no, mate. No, they've all seen the film. <laughs> OK, yeah. I love this scene. This is our mate Charlie film. Bellingham kick, kicks the can. And he said he just absolutely knackered his foot because the can... Was full. <laughs> was full. And it just it, it just had bruises for weeks on his foot after doing about 10 takes of it. And this is a, my mate Dan Blooper's one that gets hit by a car. I still think it's the best gag in the film. It's brilliant. Again, this is done on Photoshop. How did you do that role? So that's on Photoshop. It's a still of him. It looks terrible to me now, but it does just about work. So, like... It's, I, de it's definitely not the worst car effect. No, there's a, the car effect coming up is just classically awful. I love it. But, but, but this whole this, this oh, gag is brilliant. Yeah. Neil, was that you? No. No, no, that's uh, Louis. His name? Louis. <laughs> Louis. Yeah. Yeah, Louis Brownsell. So again, he so he was one of the kind of freaky babies in one of the Cradle of Filth videos, and we got we were just looking for amputees, and he came along and did his bit. We put a nappy on him and a, a monster's head, and. Uh, and then, you know, to wrote the story because we know we knew Louis. So it's like, I'm gonna write, I'm gonna write a story about a bloke with one leg who uh, wants to get another leg. But I'm gonna sound really f stupid now. So N Neil, what's your segment then? So, so this is it. This is it. No, this is it. I, yeah, without giving too much away, I provide the leg that he's looking for. Oh, I know, I know, I know what you mean now. Almost didn't recognize him because I was long, he has long, long hair. So, um, Men, Gary, Stuart, Kevin, Stephen, Matt, Weeks, Zilla, Fernando, Alex, and Peter. You call. Anybody want to ask any questions about this scene? Because I know that somebody it's... wanted to ask. Eileen had nice boobies as well, didn't she? She told me she actually had a um, a breast reduction. I can't quite believe that, but she told it me that it was a coincidence because I had to have a penis reduction. Oh. <laughs> the same gag was on Euro Trash. They say about that the tip reduction on Euro Trash. Oh, did they? <laughs> yeah. She was I great. I mean, was she only I mean, she... anything? Um, Eileen was like sort of. 35 for about 20 years, wasn't she? Yeah, I think she still is, isn't she? What, 35? <laughs> no, she, she, ne she never aged. I'd say it's more than 35. She had, um, she loves surgery, bless her. She does. But, bless um, her. I do know a lot of people who, who would ask Eileen, like, how did you do this scene and like give a blowjob to a stump? But I guess you oh, just. Well, well, I mean, she, she didn't really, I had to really decide. <laughs> There was a lot of persuasion going on in this one. Oh, know, because I just said to Eileen, you've just, you just got to do it. Just fondle the stump. It was brilliant. <laughs> so, um, oh, oh, so basically, just, basically have we got the stump? stump. We've got, we've got the, the stump. We've got the stump. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, that's not, his, that's not his real stump. Oh, <laughs> hasn't he got a real stump? He has, but um, so, because... Wasn't because, good enough for you. It, no, it, it's smaller because there's no chance yeah. to develop the muscles. So basically, so built one up. This, is what he, this is what he had <laughs> um, coming off his thigh and his, his whole top leg fit in that. So we actually built it up. Oh, so my he, God, this is amazing, so that, Alex. That I had looked, no idea. It looked like a real leg. Look it. And so, yeah, so his left leg is actually, uh, it's actually kind of really thin and quite phallic. Uh, and and so and his left leg fits into that, and then that fits into what we built to make. Oh, it I see. Like so a, you a, wanted a, it to be a chunky leg, and he had muscle oh, atrophy. So okay. But what what was really weird because Louis um, uh, Louis said when we put the 
when we put the real leg on him, he just had a bit of a freak out moment because he looked down. It was so real having a full leg that, that he just said, it just reminds me of when I had a leg. It's just sort of really weird, you know. Kind Can of... I ask, how did he lose his leg? I can't remember. Was, it, was it military or? Uh, motorcycle accident. Motorcycle, okay. Yeah. Oh my God. He wasn't born like that. No. no. So you're basically it's... making someone who had a vehicular accident relive a vehicular well, accident. Get his leg replaced and, and then lose him it. Another leg bit, that made him think about leg. having a leg. He, he actually said that losing his leg was the best thing that ever happened to him. Really? Because, yeah, because he was just doing shitty little jobs and stuff. And then he lost his leg and he was in Saving Private Ryan and quite a few other films. And then, like, you know, he said his life kind of changed. And I think he, 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 yeah. I've never met anyone with such a positive attitude to life. He was really just re such a positive guy. Yeah. He really was. That's so good to hear. So Louis lives in Biddeford now, which is where a lot of my mates have moved down to. But I've lost his number, but if, if he sees this... Louis... If you're out there, Louis, get in touch, yeah? <laughs> yeah, please do. Well, it's going to be on YouTube. If anyone knows, is it Louis? Louis Brownsell, yeah, in Biddeford. Oh, me, you can get hold of me. Lovely house there. So that, <laughs> Has we... anyone got any questions right now on anything that you have just seen? This is your only chance to talk to Alex. Oh, oh, oh so can I... I say... I've got, I've got to say, so this flat is um, Jerry Judah's flat. This is underneath my flat. Where me and my mum lived was above this, uh, me and my mum and my brother. And this, a couple of years after this, this is the flat that was used in Shaun of the Dead. This is where uh, Shaun stayed. Oh, no, no, this is it's where the she, girlfriend's this flat. This is the girl, yeah, yeah, yeah. girlfriend's flat. And Shaun climbed where up, he the, climbed Sean climbed where up he's the outside. Yeah. And wow. it was really weird, like, because I, I know Edgar from back in the day. Like, Edgar came on the set of Purvarella. This I, is the connection I love because I've spoken to Edgar a few times. Right, right. And I, but I didn't know Edgar was filming in this flat and I just came home one day. and. But and he Sean was on Clavarella, wasn't he? Edgar, yeah. He was, he was our bitch. You know. What happened to that guy? You know, <laughs> nobody knows. <laughs> I yeah, said to I, Edgar, are you in the... Are you? I, I thought Edgar was in the orgy scene. You went, no, I was just helping. So he was <laughs> just learning <laughs> the craft. So this is Neil's flat. And it's like no, it's, it's Matt's flat, but it's my, it's my ass. Oh, yeah, okay. No, we're you, Neil. It is me. <laughs> yeah, that's a, in every film that Neil Neil's got to show his ass. It's kind of his trademark. Oh, uh, is that the law? Don't, don't ask. I'm not going to do it now. So this is round at Matt, who was one of the ads or something. Yeah, he was this. Uh, yeah, yeah, assistant director. He's a really good friend of mine. I thought it was your flat because that's what your flat looks like. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> so just I to clarify think... Alex just to clarify all the music going on is Cradle of Filth but they were allowed to do it no, no. that was lost pro I don't know what were they called yeah I mean the, the this one here is Jezebel this is the song I still listen to from Jezebel I'm right. so glad they used this song on my bit because yeah, it's my yeah. favourite song as well on the bit that I was in so I was really happy yeah. about that because yeah just some of it's Jezebel basically I think there's three Cradle of Filth songs in the whole film and all the rest of the music, again, we had no money. I just asked anyone I knew who were in bands and stuff, can I just use your music? Music. So I had shit loads of music and even like people that did record labels or the drum and bass stuff. And I just went through it and just found bits of music that fitted scenes and stuff. Because some, some of it's a little bit incongruous and doesn't work, but I think mostly I quite like the way the music. So of th works. this is Matt's flat on, on that level. There's a few flats and one of the other flats Michael Fagan, the palace oh, yeah. intruder, lived. And he came out when we were filming and go, oh, I thought it was a camera crew for me. <laughs> very, very weird guy. <laughs> He's the one that sat on the Queen's bed and stuff like that. Blimey. Ooh. I think this is a very... Can I ask you, Alex? I know you probably... You probably feel like you have to be diplomatic, and I should probably save this question. But do you have any particular segments that are that you felt went really well or that are your favourites? Uh, you don't have to, don't worry about... It's uh, the ones with Emily and me, isn't it, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah mostly, yeah. <laughs> yeah it's really, it's really weird. I, I think the strongest one, like my favourite is the sick room, the, the last one. My favourite, I think, I think that could have become a feature. Well, well, well I've, I've got a story yeah, about that. I mean, it literally, we spent uh, about a year with uh, Paul Anderson, the Resident Evil guy. 
develop it into a feature. Did we wrote Event script. Horizon guy as well. Uh, did he do Event Horizon? Paul Anderson, yeah. Right, but the one who's married to Mila Jovanovic, that one. Because there were two Paul Andersons, weren't there? Yeah, that Paul S. Anderson and Paul, I don't know. I have to look it up. Are we just talking through my bit, yeah? Guys, you know, come on. You know this stuff, nerds. Come on. <laughs> That's why you're here. I've got that gun, actually. Paul something Anderson did Event Horizon. I thought it was the same guy. Paul W.S. Yeah. Yeah, so we we developed the sick room with his company for a year, but it just didn't didn't go anywhere. Oh. I always think that was the strongest one. I'm very open about saying what oh. does and doesn't work. I do yeah. love my story. I, I like this one for me is probably the most. Um, this the most bizarre. You see the half knife effect, old classic. Brilliant. Uh. Oh. So we we cast my face again, creature. Oh yeah, creature yeah. This is really clever. So that is that is. That's, that's Neil on the floor, but now that's Louis on the floor. So Louis, the guy with one leg, is playing me with a mask of my face. In really? Yeah. So, he yeah. so he's chopping his own leg off in, so in a weird way. That's, that's Louis on the floor, but with a with Neil's uh, face mask on. Do you mean a proper face cast? A proper, proper I, I, Neil, yeah, yeah, I went down and got that's my face been... cast down at Creature Effects. And weren't Creature Effects, didn't they, weren't they responsible for 28 Days Later or something? Yeah, they did like Hellraiser. Uh, they did amazing things. 28 Days Later. They, their, their biggest earner was the Camel sort of cigarette adverts. They used to kind of do these, uh, well, I know it's boring, but that's that, that they made loads of money out of them. And they had Camel! Still. There's an unfortunate, uh, one, of so, them, um, one of them ended up getting him. There's a little thing here, if you look at the skull, like eyes appear in it for no reason at all. Like, see there? Oh. It's almost like whoever edited and, that, and then, and then they would, and then they go away. Mm. So basically, because I was just getting into Photoshop and stuff, I started to put a few things in the edit that I probably shouldn't have done, really. Because they'd be a... called Easter eggs now, wouldn't they? Yeah. Like, maybe I don't know. I've been asked questions. About... There's a bit later on where Danny disappears and appears, and it's like it's just because I was quite into that effect. But really, <coughs> cocaine. <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> I think I need to discover the cocaine after this film. Um, that's the Photoshop effect, the, the gun silhouette. I'm pretty sure we didn't know who owned that house. Or something, there was something with just a nice house we filmed. She gave so me I, I did a, an interview with this uh, this lovely actress. I, can't, I think she was Australian on the making of, and it just went really well. And then it turns out the microphone wasn't working on the camera. So it was just a complete waste, but she was, she was lovely. That's a great anecdote, isn't it? <laughs> it is, yeah. I love it. <laughs> So I've got, we've got that link as well. Oh, they come. <laughs> Another prop coming. Yeah, <laughs> have a drink. Prop coming. Oh. So this is now the oh. the leg that is on the bottom of Louis. It's coming. It's quite. It's it's quite sticky. Oh, it is. It's, it's sort of melting a bit, but it's good. It's got hairs in it. I don't know if you can see all the hairs. You. So this is the um, extra leg that, and oh, so was Louis was an amputee. Louis was an amputee, yeah, yeah. So like it was that scene there where he saw himself with with the whole leg. He had a bit of an out of body experience, and it just took him back to when he was a whole man. Wow. What's the moral here then, Alex? Oh no no oh, no no! Uh, should we stay just for this? this yeah. Moment? What's the moral? What was the moral? Don't, uh, don't nick someone's them. fucking leg. Yeah, yeah. stealing no. legs is bad. No, it's... no, be happy. Be happy with what you've got. You know, be happy with the cards you've been dealt. Yeah, uh, she's, he's got a good and, 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 and don't fuck girlfriend, off, you know? and he's rich, but he wants his leg back. It's kind of it's incredibly selfish as well. The whole scene where he's more concerned about damage to his car than running over a tramp, sort of. It's, yeah, it's, yeah. It's well demonstrated. We sort of see that he's a bit of a. So this out. is a little bit stolen. The reveal here from which Italian director was it? Oh, so this, this is, is a really good reveal. Dario Argento style. Is yeah, it? that's that's the other thing. You know, really inspired by sort of Argento's work. Just like you know, loved it. Well, and it's uh, it's in Tenebrae. It's such a good uh, shock. <laughs> where basically you know the detective 
comes out of shot and the person's behind him works really well. I, I like this because what I think about the, like a zombie hopping along, I think it's just quite a funny image. So again, this is Jerry's flat and we didn't do any set dressing. It's just quite a posh flat. He's an artist, so it's a, it looks amazing, yeah. Jerry's the, the art director guy that we, that we filmed outside his studio. Why is she, oh no, she's not dead. Oh so yeah, that, that's the Tenebrae shot there. Oh, that's horrible. I think just seeing the needle going into a shaking leg. I watched this recently, like she like could cover but... up and then she kind of falls asleep with the needle. Like, what could possibly go wrong? <laughs> Does she fall asleep with the needle? Well, they're sort of cuddling with a big needle. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. Nice yeah. fat needle as well. Yeah, just relax. It's just a big needle. So, right, yeah. Yes, sorry. This is shot. Uh, I, I mean, if I could re remake this film now as the person I am now, I'd make this scene so much shorter. Uh, it's, I think it's really kind of quite self-indulgent in the scheme of things. But again, we did all these really nice, we had like a little, we didn't have a Steadicam, it was like a handheld sort of Steadicam Junior, but it was just all these shots I really liked. They were just smooth shots. So I just had trouble losing shots. So it made it a really long sequence and used all the nice shots. Oh, there's a UFO in this bit. I, and uh, when, we, when we released the film, because we first released it, I think it's in this shot here. We asked people, can you spot the UFO in the film? And it took a couple of weeks, but there was one bloke. One there bloke, we go. No, yeah, that's it. The UFO in the sky. <laughs> that's <laughs> the so first the time I've seen this. The editing room getting really boring. 20 times. I've oh, never seen uh, a UFO until then, <laughs> so thank you for that. Oh. Someone, someone said he watched the film 30 times, like within two weeks, to find the UFO. And I think they won a T-shirt or something, you know, so... Good on him. Isn't that you do... Um... It's quite a cool song going on here. Well, no, I don't like it. That doesn't mean it's not a cool <laughs> song. <laughs> it's different to the rest of the film. It's, it's more like it's Sugar different. Babes. Well, this is Jezebel as well, I think. This is Eileen's band, you know. Oh. But it's kind of, you know, like, yeah, lovey-dovey. Look at this. I mean, this scene goes on forever. It does, I actually. Think, I think this could be a bit quicker. It could be a montage. I kind of think the whole movie could be an hour and a half, if I'm honest. Yeah, about. it should have been an hour and a half, exactly. There's a little cameo coming up from Al here. Is there? Oh, yeah, yeah. From, from the waist down. Yeah, yeah, from the, from waist, the waist down. down. This is me. That's Al. That's me. Hey! Because <laughs> <laughs> Louis couldn't do that. That was a bit, a bit above his pay grade. But So Louis's pretty good at walking, but, you know, he couldn't... <coughs> Oh, was that your legs doing that? Yeah, yeah, doing, yeah. Doing the little dance. Oh, thing. Okay. Yeah. And again, this is Louis's car, which was a bonus. He says, "Oh, you, we could use my Porsche." And apparently, so Louis, Louis is rich, is he? I, I think. He I got, think he's done all right for himself. I reckon know? he got yeah. money from his accident. I'm just reading between the lines. And, and now he's a, questions at this point. Now he's a property developer. Kevin, Peter, Stephen, Fernando, Alex, Matt, Stuart, Gary, Weekzilla. Are you guys are you guys enjoying it? Are you enjoying it? Yep. We, well, we want to have your feedback. This is yeah. brilliant. Yeah. Alex. Give a thumbs up if you're happy. Oh yeah, very, very happy, mate. Hey, really good. Really Amazing. Good. You get one from Weeg? No. <laughs> <laughs> Can I actually just say that, that it was the same Paul Anderson we were talking about? Yeah. Just a yeah. thumbs up. Can you hear me? Yeah, if we remake it, we could get Weeg to play Kemper. Yep. Yeah. So I really like this. Again, this is so, for me, Tales of the Crypt or Vault of Horror. But in my mind, I had this, I mean, we had to ramp up the, the obviously accelerate the camera, you know, like make it go faster. And again, we just we just drove around town. Was and it a motorbike or a car? No, it was just a car. Really? And I asked, said, just uh, <laughs> we. But I don't think we were that dangerous. I just used the shots that make it look dangerous, and I, I kind of zoom in a bit. And that's me uh, twisting the foot. So obviously the car's not moving. I've got my hand in the shoe. Oh, is that it's like a prop? Are you just twisting his foot, or is it a prop foot? It's uh, basically my my hand is in there. Hey! <laughs> 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 I, I love this. It's so bad, but it, mm. it's ah, oh, it, it's almost good though. I oh, see. I feel now I could just add a little bit of a crumple effect on that, and and you make his it work. girlfriend, his beloved. Oh, how did she end up like that? 
I think so. I've used Photoshop again to remove her right, right leg. It's Just, good. I like the irony. Looks good. And also Photoshop to, to the rip roof in the Porsche. Mm. We actually, did we hire the police jackets? You, you made some up from high vis with silver tape. Oh. So for people that, that, maybe not these ones, but people in the background, you, and the, you use backpacks for sort of bulletproof rest, vest. It was quite clever. I, I think. think these ones were from another film that someone yeah, was filming. They look pretty genuine. And the policeman's hat. Oi. Don't know if I could say this. Um, one of our friends, one of our friends acquired, let's, let's just say, acquired the policeman's hat. Um, so it's quite genuine. You nicked it. What? No, I, dare you. I dare you, Emily. So he wants to get rid of his evil leg. And isn't that a sort of like homage to all the, yeah, the a, not a of like weird old horrors, isn't there? Where like yeah, the, it's, hand yeah. oh, the hand of with um, Oliver Stone's film, isn't it? With Michael Caine. Yeah. 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 What is it? It is a portmanteau film as well. What's it called? Uh, Dr. Terror's House of Horrors has got the hand. Mm. It goes right back to the EC comics. That's a classic thing, is it? A, a limb or a hand or something. Peter, say that again. It, it, right back to the old EC comics, you know, there's always like a, a possessed hand or a, or a leg or an arm or something like that. So. It's, a, it's a popular theme, for sure. Yeah. 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 I was just said, like, so that scene there, Danny wasn't in the scene with the cops. It's kind of, it looks quite obvious now if you know. But we filmed this scene with a policeman and then, because I think at this stage, Danny wasn't available, he'd gone on tour. So that's not Danny's hand. But, you know, when we eventually got Danny, that's when he put on a little bit of weight and, you know, and we just filmed his intercuts into that uh, policeman scene. So who's this now? Are you back in the padded cell? Who, how did you make the padded cell? It looks, it does look a bit umbilical, I'll be honest. Well, that's good. I mean, yeah, exactly. But, it, doesn't, uh, it doesn't look like a typical padded cell. It's not a typical. There's a, this is someone's like basement in just off Brick Lane. And again, it's some, it was someone we knew. And, and he just said, I've got, a, I've got an old basement. You can use it to build a set. And we went down there and just full of pigeon shit. I don't know if you ever saw it. It was like oh, really, I didn't go it was fucking that. horrible. So you had to clean out all this pigeon shit. And then we built this room with the, with the one corridor. And that became Kemper's cell. Um, how did you build it? Well, I have like tight, like tight. Yeah, and... I think oh, Marcus got some du Marcus Raven did it. He got some duvets, blankets, uh, and some Hessian sacks, and just stapled them onto the wall and just stretched the rope. And that's why it was just kind of quite haphazard, but it's just got that great effect. It was really. Did you um... ever go in there and throw yourself around, Alex? Just to... no, I never, I never, I never did. There's some funny stuff in the making of on it, but I mean that was really stressful. That was a really stressful day. You weren't having any fun at that point. The, the set wasn't finished and we had to start filming. It was like a bit mental. And it was kind of like, and I, I had this really kind of romantic idea with that feather falling down. The feather falls next to the toilet and then he sees a little bit scrap of paper. And it's, it's you know, we shot what, what was in my mind, but it doesn't really, doesn't really work. Like sometimes I'm, I'm a bit too ambitious <laughs> and I've really got to think about what we've got in front of me. I was much better on in inbred. I sort of learned, I learned a lot, you know, and just went with what we got rather than just trying to be exact what was in my mind. Alex said uh, earlier that uh, they designed uh, the padded room like that because it's more practical to make. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It was just a but, fast, uh, fast way of I, I believe it was a coincidence because uh, the design reminds me of the... Um, Expressionism, German Expressionism uh, movies. Well, of yeah, course, yeah. that was the intent, wasn't it? Yeah. Well, that, that's what I mean about the. Uh, yeah, there was a guy that he was convinced that it was, you know, we'd done it on purpose to represent the human brain. But I really liked the interpretations like that, you know. And I think, yeah, Marcus is an artist, a painter, and so maybe there is a bit of that, but subconsciously. That's the. Did you choose, did did you choose like, specifically the design, or or uh, yeah, the the designers? made their own thing it was it was just i mean there were there was no drawings for it it was just literally that's what happened you know what i mean no one really okay. did, did any designs so this is a course it often happens though, doesn't it like what often happens is that people oh, will nice. create some <clears throat> story <clears throat> about <clears throat> how they <throat> interpret a film and oh, the director popular, popular. Is, no i i, I didn't popular. intend that but i love it so i don't think we need that 
need to touch on him. Okay. Look, 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 look. Left, left screen. Yeah, yeah. Is it Charles Manson? Yeah, this is uh, an inflatable Charlie Manson that came free with Bizarre magazine. <laughs> and it's still got the same air in it from the film in Cradle of Fear. Uh, How yeah, I haven't, I haven't filled it up again. It's probably quite alcoholic. That's evil, eh? I, I had noticed that from the start. That's why I don't want to geek out or anything, but... There's a, there's a few bits in this scene as well. I've only seen one person notice it on a, like, a forum message, but I put some stuff on the TVs in the background that I really shouldn't have done. Um, Why? I, there's, some, there's, some, there's some actual Mondo Because, death, it, yeah, death it's, it's a horrible, it's one of yeah. the most horrible real death Mondo scenes, but... Why did you do that? Because I'm, I wanted to freak people out that they're there, this one here. Yeah, yeah I've seen so, this, it's these, not like, good. Um, it is not good, Stuart, you're right. Yeah, no, Stuart, it's not you're, good. yeah, you're right, it's wrong. Um, and uh, I was going to say, so this whole office, because again, this looks like we've got a budget, but it's um, so Eddie, the producer, his wife worked at this office, um, and we would, she just said, you can get in there on the weekend, there's no one there. Mm -hmm. So we just went in there and we just dressed this one cubicle and got all my mates in to become the other office workers. And uh, again, just like low budget, sort of didn't, didn't yeah. cost anything. Are you trying to make? Uh, can you just remind me of the name of your lead man here? So that, that's Stuart. Stuart, Stuart Lang, who, Stuart who, Lang. who went on to be in EastEnders. Yeah, he, oh. he was in EastEnders quite a lot. So, so Stuart uh, Lang is the actor's name. I meant, but yeah. the character. So he's the son of the inspector. What's the character's Nielsen. name? Nielsen. Nielsen. Uh, Somebody Nielsen. Yes, yeah, so he's he's Nielsen's son. Let's go yeah. lodge. You're trying to make him out to be a perv, aren't you? He, he is a perv. Naughty perv. Yeah, so all these things on the set, um, I made all these. I'm, I, quite, I'm, quite, I'm, I'm quite proud of them. Um, but again, there's probably images in there that... Just, what, can I just say, what's really <laughs> interesting about this is that the internet, this is, this is almost um, embarrassing to say, but the internet, when was this, Alex? Was it 2001? 1999. Was it? It's released 2001. Oh, well, we started filming and I wrote it then, but yeah, it came out in... It might have come out in... Okay, out just, just before 9 11. The internet was about to... I mean, this was quite a new thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, was, a, it was a new thing, really. I mean, even... I mean, even this has been not ripped off. had a mobile. <laughs> There's been quite a few films that have ripped off this like exact idea since. I thought... But this is actually Dom, me and Dom Hellstone. I should say, uh, maybe that, that's Amber, um, Adrian's missus, and that's Jan, who was also the bassist in Cradle of Filth. I think all, all Cradle of Filth make, make cameos on this. I haven't done a tick count on this, but that would be quite nice. Sorry, did I say that no. out loud? <laughs> Yeah, very, it really like... reminds me of a very famous actor who, a very famous actor who was in. Um... You see his re his reflect because I I do all the shots of the screen, but you'll see it more later on. But you see his reflection in it, which I I, I was quite pleased with because it does feel like someone's looking at it. Oh, again, this is a famous. It's, only, it's a famous takeaway on Holloway Road. I thought it was Holloway Road. Yeah, it's yeah. famous because it was used. You know when Holloway Odeons used to have adverts for the local shops yeah. it's like yeah come come to binjuri on holloway road <laughs> so this is like this was in one of the uh, adverts on holloway odeon and then uh, we, went, we went there and said uh, can we shoot can we shoot a film in your restaurant they were open uh, and we'll just give you a credit and they're like yeah right <laughs> so, really? yeah credit on the film I'm just going to um, say this. This is from ages ago. Gary Stevenson to everyone. I don't think anyone can hear me, but Emily and Alex, it was the same Paul Anderson you were talking about. Because oh. I Good research. Very well good. done, Gary. Yeah. Um, I can't remember whose house this was. Oh, this was, a, I think, a friend of Siska. Siska was the line producer. And again, we wanted a kind of middle-class, trendy house. And he said, oh, check out my pad. And it's just so perfect. Mm. Uh, we, we managed to put a little dolly track in there. So we've just got all these really nice shots. As I said before, the internet and everything was, I hate, it does make me feel well old, but it was sort of burgeoning. So was the dark web something you were aware of? No, I mean, the dark web wouldn't have been called The that dark then, web that it, didn't but, even exist then. But there was dodgy shit. Yeah, I mean, basically, I was just all over anything dodgy on the web at that time. But the dark <laughs> web... 
tour didn't even exist back then. Okay. So, I mean, it's re- it really was kind of based on, you know, I could just see there's some dodgy shit on the internet and I just imagined what if there's something really dodgy on the internet. Uh, and it is, it's kind of... Um, it's very visionary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very visionary, visionary. Yeah, yeah. A lot of films about. came out after this yeah. that went into the dark, the dark web. I, lo- I love this shot of Stuart. The way his eyes are lit, it was kind of accidental, but it just looks like devil eyes just there. Yeah, Spot yeah. The little... Oh, and that one. So again, this is the exterior of the place we shot. The is, uh, it's, in, it's in Euston. It's quite a famous big office block just by Euston Station. And the, the girl here, she was in um, the Flowered Up video, Weekender, which is one of my favourite pop videos. And it's uh, like, definitely like, go on YouTube and watch Weekender by Flowered Up. It's like a 10 minute long uh, rave video from the mid 90s. And it kind of homages Quadrophenia. And she plays Ecstasy, Ecstasy Girl in it. And um, she was a mate of Siska's. So I was like, yeah, let's go get Ecstasy Girl in this. So Ecstasy she... Girl, I want that name. That's, that's yeah, cool. but, uh, watch, watch uh, Weekender uh, Flowered Up. It's a fucking great video. And you'll, you'll recognize it. Neil's disappeared. He's gone to the loo. Neil's gone to the loo. Well, no, Neil's making drinks. No one needs to go to the loo, goes to the loo. Neil's making drinks. Well done, Neil. This is my uncle's house in Hill in uh, Hillway in Highgate. We just use it for the exterior. But again, again, doing I get people asking me about like how do you make low budget films? It's just you know, use what you've got available. Don't shoot something in outer space where you need to fucking spend yeah. shit. Yeah, you can always do that. Get, get your location. Get get a good location and and get as much as you can out of we, it. We just use use what you've got. If you live next to a barn, shoot in a barn. If you live next to a skip, shoot in a skip. You know. So would you say that would de- that would define the story you make, the story you write? Uh, well, yeah, yeah, sure, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, well, don't, certainly the yeah the locations. Don't, once you've got an idea. Don't write your whole film set on Mars if you've got n- nowhere that looks like Mars. Mars. This all, I mean, I've got to say, Sebastian Bontempi, I haven't really said anything about him. He was an amazing uh, cinematographer on this, cameraman cinematographer. I just absolutely adore his lighting. Um, he wasn't as aware, you know, he wasn't as familiar with the genre as me. So I had to say, you know, that, that stylized the lighting here and there. But he just nails the lighting. You know, he was so quick. Was, you were lucky to get him. He yeah. was really brilliant. So quick setting up the lighting. We really, we shot on a, I think a Canon... We shot on the same camera that they shot 28 Days Later on. And 28 Days Later was one of the first kind of shot on, shot on video films that did really well. Um, and it's not the best camera, but it kind of holds up quite well. Mm. I think it's the Canon X1 or something. I don't know. I, all I know is people going on about the big red. Shooting on a big red. Well, yeah, because we, we shot inbred on the red camera, the first the first red camera. That's oh, did a, you? That's a, a pretty good beast. I've just realised who um, you're... This guy, I think... I don't know why, but I think he, he looks and acts like Sam Rockwell. Right. Yeah, yeah, there's a Sam... Yeah, there's, it, yeah, there's a and he does. He's a famous actor. Yeah, yeah. You guys knew like a British. So I almost thought it was him at one point. Stuart needed quite a lot of persuading to be in this. I'd say he's the most. He was the most proper actor in this how film. Did, how, how did you know him? Well, through through Nico, who was the producer. Nico lived in a flat and had some actors living with him. Um, and yeah, it took a lot of persuasion because, like, so Stuart went to EastEnders after this. He didn't want to do something that might fuck up his career. Well, he was like, yeah, he was like one of the biggest actors and he was being asked to play one of the most horrible characters. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's so, it is the strongest, I think it's the strongest storyline though. Uh, I came up with the title Free Surf for the internet company, which was a play on, is it Free? Shout out to Mark Rothbone there. Yeah. Big, Known as Mark Rossi at the time, but a, re- a really nice guy. Big shout out to Mark Rothbone. We've, we've become like top friends. Um, he plays what's the in inbred is the guy with the ferret. Yeah. The, scene inbred. the ferret that comes out of his flies. He he was also in um, Shane Ritchie's uh, The Gentleman. Actually, oh, I saw it. him in recently. Oh, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, really lovely guy. So, anyone does anyone have any questions at this point before it it kicks off? Yeah, just one right here. Um, Hi, Stuart. Well, it's not really a 
it's not really a question. It's more of um, I know some people that actually like this whole section better than Hostel. They think the whole sick room is so much better than Hostel. It's right, right. Yeah, I mean, I like I love the script we wrote for it. I mean, that that's another story in itself. Um, and I, 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 it's just a brilliant story. I think I kind of envisaged, envisaged it as a longer story. Um, Torture porn wasn't a phrase when this came out, was it? But no. it, it sort of maybe sort of pre shadowed. Sort of yeah, that. yeah. Torture porn. No, I think that that became coined afterwards by some journalist, probably after Hostel and Saw. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. But yeah, I, I, think, I think you were the first, I think you probably were the first one to do the idea of... Definitely like a, an internet place which is really dark, because there's, there's something called the Red Room, dark which web. is an, an urban myth about the Red Room on the, on the dark web, where you can go there and basically do this, you know, tell people to kill people, pay millions yeah, of pounds. Yeah, but it was pre, pre-hostel for sure. You get... Twin Peaks is a good one for the Red Room. That's where I would go. That's where I think mm. about for the Red Room. Right, right, right. Is that the, the film or the... The TV series? The well, series. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but the the yeah. first series, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Another little cameo by Alex there. And who's that? Doyle and uh, Amber. Amber. Yeah, yeah. So, Alex, did you like... Do you like doing a bit of... Um... Acting. A few, a few cameos. Well, uh, H- Hitchcock does Alan these Hitchcock. little ones. Alex just does about 10 of them per movie. Sort of like the or is it because you have to? Or because you like to? I mean, the, the ones in this were like more of a laugh because I've literally just like been a bit freaky. But I'm used, I've been in a few other people's films as an extra and I just really go over the top. You know, I just, I can't really get, I can't really... If I'm wearing a mask, it's brilliant. But if my face is on, uh, no, I don't like acting. I guess he's a good little actor, though. He, 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 he takes it seriously. I think it helps a director possibly if they if they taste a bit of the acting life. Mm. I did watch Witchcraft X the other day. Oh, yeah, that, that's... <laughs> oh, wait, oh, really? Have, yeah. Have you, have you got a copy of that? I've got a copy of that, and so is oh, Pete. Okay. I remember Pete saying. Yeah. Oh, no one's Alex in it. It's no. uh, Elizar's film, isn't it? Yeah. Elizar, he died, you know. He, he passed away, yeah, bless him. Yeah, but yeah. I, they never gave me a copy of that. They put my teeth in with... Are you in it as well? I never got a copy. Who I made that? it box. Who was I, in it? I, I never got a copy of that. Are you I, in that? Yeah, yeah, I'm in it, I think. Am I in it, Stuart? If you are in it, yeah. I've seen you. You're a vampire that just runs vampire. around. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, God, I've never seen it. I'd love to see it. It's uh, meant to be shit. Eileen said she went to the screening and walked out because the sound Of course goes. it'll be shit, but I bet it'll be brilliant now, you know. It was good shit. Fun. All I've seen is my stupid titty lesbian scene. That I, didn't know, I didn't know you did one in that. <laughs> I might need to see that. You know, yeah, yeah. It's research for Research, exactly, yeah. 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 I'm a complete you look system. amazing in it, though, Emily. You really do look nice. Um, Emily, I'll get Stuart's details later on and stuff. Okay. Yep. Definitely. <laughs> but I think Neil said something about this thing that I forgot. That there's a bit coming up where we wanted a bailiff to kind of walk into the flat. So it's sort of coming up in a bit. And we just didn't, there was no one on. So we'd used, every, we'd used everyone. Everyone on the crew, yeah, yeah. To, to be the roles in the films. And we just needed someone. To be a bailiff, so I just literally approached someone in the street. So they were driving to the set, and Alex just saw this big guy walking down the street and just goes, Oi, mate, do you want to be in a film? <laughs> so they kind of wrote this, this complete stranger in to, to, to be. Is it coming up on the. Yeah, 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 yeah. And so. it's perfect, but Alex will tell you the one bit that let it down. But uh, yeah, just kind of literally grabbing a stranger off the street and saying, Do you want to be in a film? Was sort of. Uh, Mate, I've still got that sticky. I mean, all of these stories are all of these stories are brilliant when when you hear them retrospectively. But at the time, I bet it was a bit stressful, like thinking, "Fucking hell, I just need someone here now to be an actor." Those are those are real mondo images. And there's no one here. That that top guy shot his face off with a shotgun and lived. And I think the bottom. Was that the Judas Priest? No, no, no. Okay. No. Yeah. So you see here, that's a still image of Stuart. Just, Superimposed, but it kind of really works. But if you if you stare at the reflection in the screen, you realise it's, it's totally still, but it, it fools the eye. 
And this guy, this guy here in the, in the room is he from Cradle? Uh, no, the band. He, no. he answered. Uh, we we just did a call out. We look. We were wanting someone that we could abuse. Um, you know, <laughs> so, someone that basically eats glass and walks on nails and does that sort of thing. Because yeah, the horrors. We, we wanted, yeah. So he got in contact and said, "Yeah, do it." I forgot his name, uh, Darren or something. But he said, "Do anything you want to me." And like we did, you know, we we had. Oh, I've got a rubber hammer prop. Proper look. Where is it? Uh, mid, middle drawer. Uh, there. Where? there. Middle drawer. Um, there. Uh, so on the right. Yeah. Open it. And on the left. Just, uh, at the bottom hammer. Ah. So yes. Can I twat you with it? Yeah, of course you can. So basically, like we we didn't actually hurt him, but it, it does kind of a, uh, you know, like it's, it's actually not that soft. So yeah, we we got creature effects to build a. And it's it's very realistic. Yeah, do it again. I did Neil. It's not in the eye, though. <laughs> on the head. <laughs> the hammer coming up. Oh, I'm surprised it's what he chose. This, hammer! This, it's so, um, it's so hostile. <laughs> the more I uh, think about it. Oh, so it's a good prop. Yeah, so it's, it's got a hollow bit in the end, and we just put blood in the end of that and just whacked his face. It looked fucking brilliant. And Tristan is one of the guys in the balaclavas, Tristan Versluis. And there was one point in the film where Tristan ran out of blood, and I fucking freaked out. Apparently, <laughs> I, he got really angry. I got really angry. It's your job. So you had to blood. So it was a, su it was a Sunday, and I sent, I sent Tristan out to go and find uh, food colouring. Which is the main ingredient of blood, and it and you've got to get blood. You cannot not have blood. I, I think he learned he learned a lot on this film. You know, we, you know, he's can't you freestyle blood, blood with treacle and red dye? Yeah, it's always golden sweet. syrup and re, yeah, red food coloring and water. Sort of uh, it, it really ruins your teeth. I've had so much it golden ruins syrup pretty much everything for hours. Yeah, the blood like. I, I've got a thing basically on all all the films I've done. There's so much blood that it kind of your shoes get sticky, and I hate that. It's the stickiness when you're walking around a, a horror film set. Mm. There's everything sticky, and all it's the walk. It's really things. sticky. It's so it's sticky. Really sticky. And if you're outdoors and you're using this fucking syrup, you get all the uh, insects. And wasps. Oh yeah, on yeah, on, yeah. on inbred we had. And wasps, wasps and, and wasps. We called them stumped, stumped flies. Yeah, we called them the wasp stumped oh, no. flies. Hey, this so is the guy. This Bailey. is the guy. So he wasn't a very good actor. And, and then apparently Al, he had one line, which was just go, bailiff. And when he, and when he, Al went, actually went, bailiff. <laughs> yeah, yeah, very high pitched <laughs> voice. So Al had to overdub him or something. Bailiff. <laughs> but he looks the part. Yeah, he looks he the looks part. Good. And literally they just... Passed him in the van on the way to the set and just said, "Oi, mate, jump in." A bit like Pete McKay. I I told Sebastian how to rig up this shot because there was a there was a balcony above him, and I said, "Just put the camera on a bit of string." It's brilliant. Uh, uh, but then twist the camera so it, it it untwists as we lift it up, and it works so well. So, so Alex, do you feel like you had a few um sort of like Sam Raimi moments where you had to do a really inventive? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, that, you had to like was, make it happen because I mean, obviously, I, I love Sam Raimi and Leave Evil Dead, and also yeah, Peter, yeah. Peter Jackson, Bad Taste, and definitely seen Bad Taste. So I'd I would storyboard and think about shots. The, the Black Cat Pub in Camden, very uh, famous gay pub, and uh, it's going to open again soon. Actually, also featured yeah. with Man Life. Sorry about that interruption. One of Neil's favourite pubs, apparently. What's Go not, back to your um, genius shots, Alex. Well, again, we got no permission from Camden High Road where we shot this and that chicken shop, you know. And so Stuart's just doing this. It's just me and a camera. People just thought we were just weird. I just, I just love it. I mean, to I set up like this now would cost thousands. Did you but make the sign? You made for your that actors be really embarrassing. No, no, that's, that's, okay, that's, that's sorry. Real. Yeah, yeah. I, I, so again, this internet cafe didn't know them at all. So could we shoot a film there? And and uh, we got it for free. Who's that girl though? Because she, I thought she was just like someone in there, but then she features. She she she, she came to audition for I think the role that um, might might it might even have been your role, Emily. I don't know, but she or Melissa's role maybe. 
but she auditioned for a role and she's quite sexy, uh, but couldn't get it. So I sort of put her in here. And that's Eddie, the producer. Eddie Kane. And he didn't know we were going to do that, like the website called Ask Eddie. And uh, I, don't, I don't know if he was pissed off or not. But yeah, so the producer's called Eddie Kane. And he's a lovely Scottish guy. He's like, he, he does film financing for like everyone's films in the UK. Really? Is he still doing it? Yeah, yeah, he's still doing it, yeah. Mm. Is that the hardest thing about getting a film um, off the ground? Like, I reckon so, yeah. Yeah, just, just getting just to know, money. yeah. Well, money, money. I mean, because crew comes after getting some cash. Um, I mean, on this one, I, oh God, the way we raise the money on this is a story in itself. We literally. Is it strictly legal, mate? <laughs> so, uh, it doesn't matter. It's only us. We put we put and an advert in the in the evening standard. Uh, that's that's Charlie why I made Charlie Bellingham. You kicked the can earlier. <laughs> Not literally kicked the can. Um, we put an advert in the evening standard for people wanting to put money into a sort of a film project, and uh, it was it's like the opposite of a, a scam. But a Nigerian guy turned up. Who, who really wanted to invest in something strange. So we got like a couple of grand off this Nigerian bloke that we'd never met. We met him in a car park and he had, he had his kids in the car and he was carrying like his, you know, and he just said, oh, it's my last, it's my last money. I'd like to invest it. I'd like to give it to you guys. So the first two grand we got was from a Nigerian bloke. Obviously we gave these money back and he got a profit, but it's just the fact that that's kind of kicked it off. It's like, fuck it, if, if he's going to give us money, Let's go and ask some other people. So I think we raised about we raised twenty five grand, and that's that's what started the project. That's and then amazing. We got, yeah, so yeah, some yeah. random person gave you money, yeah. and you gave it back, and that made you realise that. Well, when well, people are up investing money. in something weird, you know, and this is pre this is crowdfunding as well. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Was, yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm sort of tempted to try crowdfunding, but I don't want to. I think it's got to be done right. I mean, I think what I'd do, I'd probably spend a few grand and do an amazing like three or four minute thing of what I want to make rather than just put up, put up a page and saying, give me 500 grand to do something. I'd make a big effort to show you where the money's going to go. Um, yeah, Alex, Alex, I think you, I think you would do quite well out of it. I mean, oh, even though you are gender and done crowdfunding. I mean, no, but, but I know, uh, was it Brian used it? or someone like did crowdfunding and got like 15 quid I say so it's like you know but I, I know a lot of the people that I uh, that kind of wanted to release this film and back in the day they were just small independent companies now one of them is making films for, for Netflix and Prime but their production company is doing really well and I think there's so much money in sort of TV now I'd quite happily take a bit of it TV and Doing a mini series, I oh, think. Sorry, can I just quickly say? Can I just quickly say this shot? All this sequence here is at King's Cross Station, and oh. it's going to sound like obvious now. We didn't ask for permission. We, didn't, we never we didn't asked tell, for permission. We didn't tell anyone we're filming this. Even that shot in W. H. Smith, we just fucking went and did it. So you did know? you just put a defaced book back on the yeah. shelf and let some poor punter no, I think buy an A to Z minus a page? Probably, yeah, I think so. Yeah. I think all of the film wasn't all wasn't the whole film guerrilla style. Yeah, everything. Okay. There was no permission. It was all. It was all. Don't ask. Don't pay. Just no do permission. it. No permission. Just, just do it. But all of this stuff, just do it. I like that. I, I love it. It's got. A like my good friend Kate Moss once said, "Never explain, never complain, just do it." You're who? You're what? Kate Moss. We said good friend. No, it's it's a joke. She's not my good friend, but like, yeah. I've got, it, I've got, I've got it's her quote. Place. It's her quote. Never explain, never complain, just fucking do it. I was in a band and the guy that replaced me on guitar ended up marrying Kate Moss. Oh, yeah. If yeah. only I'd stuck in that band. Oh. Maybe it was Stagno. Yeah, yeah. Jamie Ince. Oh, yeah. Really? Mr. Kate Moss for a while, yeah. We've got stories, Emily. Yes, yeah, have us on more often. Johnny, you know. Johnny Depp in a toilet. No, not Johnny Depp. Uh, my friend swears she fucked. Um, okay. um, what's that footballer called? The thick uh, one. Uh, Stan Collymore. No, really thick. Good looking, thick. Gascoigne. Gascoigne, good looking. Beckham. Beckham. Really? My friend said she was at a party and they were having sex all the time. Not, he, he's quite famous. David <laughs> Beckham and Kate Moss. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
That's what I heard. Anyway, so what's right. happening here, Alex? Is everyone in the same place? I've got... Emily, who's the most famous person you've slept with? Me? Oh, I know. I, I've got an idea. But my... Mark Lamar. Uh... Oh. I and Alex, there was no... There was none of that. No, oh, no, okay. I never said there was. I heard rumours about the bite mark on your boobie. Oh, was that maybe? <laughs> <laughs> he was very keen. Yeah. He, Emma, if you want me to accept Bill, fan... Alex, I'll do it. You know, just... We had a fandango, but we didn't have a, a sex. Um, this scene here. Okay, so Eddie, Eddie knew someone, and I, I'm not sure if it's someone that knows Martha Gold, but this house was just a friend of Eddie's lived in this house, which is it's in London, but that drive he walks up, that's, that drive is in front of this house. You've got to go down that long drive and you get to a couple of these cottages and it's in London somewhere. I forgot where, maybe Uxbridge. Beautiful. And it's amazing. And so that was my exorcist shot with the light coming through the window. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And again, so we're going to meet uh, Little Willie. Little, little Willie, and all the furniture scaled down. So was it his house or no? Or... The furniture's not scaled down. Is it not? No, it's just very low furniture. Well, it must have been on acid when I was watching it. So I mean, I, I like. This Are shot. you sure it's not scaled down? Yeah, because Stuart's sitting on the arm of a chair. Is that the tools I had to put to the wall? So, so this is now in. Uh, I bet you a quid that is scaled down furniture. This is now in Angel Islington. So this is someone else's house. Off Euston Terrace. And it's not a dwarf's it's house. It's not a dwarf's house. But, <laughs> but people think that the furniture is really dwarf sick. houses aren't like hobbit houses, are they? They're just normal um, houses. So, right? Fun fact, for a little, so Little Willie was in the uh, Cradle video where we had like lots of freaky people and dwarfs playing the weird babies. He's got a big fat suit on, hasn't he? He's yeah, got yeah. a big fat suit. Yeah. But, and we became really matey and he said, please give me a role within your film. And it was like, yeah, of course. And uh, so gave him quite a big role, quite a big part. It's got a lot, a lot, a lot of lines here. Not that big. <laughs> but uh, when we uh, went we to film this, you know, at the house, and Willie sort of says, Alex, I've got something to tell you. I'm massively dyslexic and I haven't learned any of the lines. I can't read the script. <laughs> so no. I had to feed in the lines. You can sort of feel that it's, it's kind of a bit improvised, bit, bit. I mean, I'm, I'm literally just the cup, yeah. kind of telling him what to say before he says it. I want to ask about Stuart's line as well, because he goes, why don't you show me, little man? But yeah, that, that was improvised. Was that improvised? Yeah, yeah. okay, yeah. I've just heard it. <laughs> Which is We're brilliant. slightly out of sync, but yeah. yeah. I think like, I had to stop corpsing. I just thought that was fucking hilarious. <laughs> Were you, you corpsing behind the camera? I think it's because we've got a wide-angle lens, Neil. That's why it looks small in the background. It does just looks, yeah. Or he looks massive. Are you sure it wasn't scaled down <laughs> furniture? I'm sure. It's just someone's house. How would you know? You're only the director, mate. <laughs> we are going back 20 odd years. Odd. Can we start from the beginning again? Is it, like, is it going too quick? <laughs> <laughs> this is all really good fun watching this. So this is, he gets his comeuppance, doesn't he? You know, that sort of. Uh... Tomorrow. I just love this so much. He 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 becomes so addicted. He wants to experience it first. Yeah. And Who did you base that on? Alex? And it's a, it's another one of those. Be careful what you wish for. Exactly, yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's a classic. It's not going to die. That one. We built this set in the same place we built Kemper's brain. We trashed that set with Kemper, and we built this room, this octagonal room. So in the basement in Brick Lane. In basement in Brick Lane, mm -hmm. yeah. Sit cam basically like eight panels. So yeah, Tristan Versluce is, I think the guy with the sledge. No, Tristan's got the razors. I oh think. yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. pretty sure. So it's like uh, the razor blades have got like uh, blood tubes hooked up to them. I think it's Tristan. No, that's Tristan. With the hammer. Yeah, Tristan's got the hammer. He's going to break the leg. What I love about the leg break um, of that you watch oh, it and you don't realise that half the time it's the crew having to just step in and do stuff. They're not oh, yeah. anything with a mask. Like I, used looks, to do. Yeah. <laughs> I love this. It's oh, brilliant. it's horrible. It's beautiful, Emily. It's beautiful. Horrible is beautiful. That's what I mean. Yeah. Oh, the, a police station, police station again, goes without saying, costs nothing. When it went in and said, can we just shoot the outside of your police station? Wait, you went into a police said, yes. station and said, can we just shoot? 
Yeah, and they said, yep. Yeah. We said it, our detective's going to walk bored. <laughs> That's incredible. We're well bored. <laughs> really? Yeah, and oh, earlier on, when you saw the real police car, right at the start, they were just driving by to check us out. And I flagged them down and went, don't suppose you could just park here for like <laughs> half an hour with all your lights going? And they said, yeah, all right. <laughs> Well, they're bored, you know. They're just, That's they're the thing you, you don't realise. The they, they probably think, well, you know, it's about the best yeah. night of their life. You know, they don't get to do all the shit that you see on Miami Vice. Well, that's, that's well, yeah. and even the reality programmes are the edited highlights of a week. So, yeah, that's probably the most exciting thing that happened to them all day. Yeah. And what I love, though, Alex, is that you had the gu- you've always had the guts to just ask. He does. He goes for it. So again, okay, you, you, you know, you you are a prime example of don't ask, don't get. Exactly. <laughs> this is the recording. That's the recording studio in um, Hampstead where Paul McCartney. That's got to be the basement at where you used to at Brookfield. Yeah, this is the basement at my place. We shot loads of stuff down there. It's a really good location. So this bit coming up. So they're like, this is the fifth. So that's that's Adrian, the guitar, the Amber's husband. We've oh. got a weird, weird mask on. That's uh, Paul, Paul Allender. Oh, sorry, it's Paul Allender, sorry. sorry. Yeah. Sorry. Thanks, yeah. Stuart. We just hand over to the expert for a moment. Cheers, Stuart. <laughs> Stuart, by the okay, way. There's a really annoying bit where she turns around and has like, eyes in her head or something. Yeah. Why yeah. did you do that? Well, exactly, that was like another thing I did. Like, I think you were high when you were well, editing it. probably was, yeah. Yeah, why is there an eye in her head? There's two eyes in her head, and they're Danny's eyes. It's ridiculous. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Well, was, this is probably like near the end of like a fucking six month edit. You were just like, fuck it, I'm just going to stick some eyes on the back of her head. Yes. <laughs> it's not yet anyway, I've given it away. Oh, so I don't quite understand how it goes from a copper getting in to... Well, someone else says he, he just appears as well. There's another bit. Danny just literally materialises and it's like... And what happens to the old Bill? That then? shouldn't happen. Well, that that is... The old Bill is Danny in disguise. Did you not see? So, sorry, <laughs> But then again, you know, does all horror have to make sense? Maybe it doesn't. You know, if you set something up to be a bit... Look! Oh, so obvious. It was oh, like, right, I, missed, yeah. I missed that last time. What wow. did she do? She had, a she, fucking... she had a big stupid eye on the back of her head. <laughs> Massive alien eye. Oh, <laughs> this is Esau, a mate's uh, girlfriend. She's gorgeous. Irish. Irish beauty. Irish. <laughs> like you are Irish. I do like my Irish, yeah. You're Irish. Oh, so this is filmed. Ne- you won't guess how much this location costs. Nothing. 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 Nada. This is my um, secondary school, William Ellis. What? We, really? went, we went there and I said, hello, William Ellis. Do you remember me? Yeah. I went here 30 years ago. Can we film in your school? They went, yeah, all right. <laughs> <laughs> so we have... Yes, so he just appears. He shouldn't. He's legitimately in the room. But that's the thing. It's actually, it's really hard to get film locations sometimes. Yeah, it is. It is really. I did a shoot in um, a a graveyard a couple of years ago, and it was only for a Fright Fest promo. But they had to lie about what the film was because a graveyard run by a church is a great location we, and we did, uh, all the time they get asked all the time if people can film there and they always say no so either you lie yeah you, or you, they, pay, you, you need, pay them loads of money or you, you need pay, a yeah. of nice charming people that can just sweet talk them for however long you need it, yeah, yeah. We, uh, alex just it's just got chances got, are got they won't cool. see you because they're just little biddies in an office so chances are they won't see what you're doing well, so yeah, it depends so. on how gutsy you are we go in and saying you're you're filming something for Jesus. We did that. So that Cradle Field video again. Uh, um, it starts off with them outside of a church, and we went to the church, and I, I went to the vicar, and basically we said we're doing it for a band called Cradle of Faith. <laughs> <laughs> and he and he let us film. Down to the <laughs> Cradle of Faith. Thing is, with Cradle, it works with so many things, doesn't it? Cradle of Filth, Cradle of Fur, Fear. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you got you got stopped by the. I, I was just to say, I mean, it's pretty obvious, but I've never done a shot like this before, where he's not driving the car. We're just basically shaking the car and moving some lights around his head. But it was really fun to do. I've never sort of tried to recreate that sort of movement. Oh, and also this song by um, 
Slacker um, was someone that we knew. I think you really liked the song because you oh, yeah, used I, it a bit I, too much. I, I loved it, used it a bit too much. This is more dancey. Yeah, it's more dancey. We, we got it for free, um, which is, again, just really good. Just got, got What's this, Westway? Got oh, Westway. Yeah, this is the Westway yeah. in, in London town. The Trellick Tower on the left? Probably, yeah, coming yeah. up, yeah, yeah. And Grenville on the right, actually. So this is, is that a still shot? That's the recording oh, no, studio. That's the, is it uh, the guy? Uh, no, right Paul McCartney. It's in Hampstead. But it's the guy that produced the Beatles albums. He set up his own recording studios. I've forgotten his name. It's quite famous. George Look, Martin. Yeah, yeah, George Martin. Didn't ask for permission. <laughs> 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 Just shut it and then put a, I love it. Put a title. So I here, love this, this whole location, this is insane. This is a, a pub. Oh, you might remember the name. It was... Uh, City Road, City, and it was the one, so owned by the KLF. Yeah, it was the bank balls. Yeah. They, so they used to let off bombs in the bank ball, didn't they? Yeah. Like, what was it called? And so, yeah, I, yeah, I know. Yeah, so it was uh, Bill Drummond and Thingy, like, basically, this is with their pub, and it was in an old bank, and it's a brilliant location in the city, and the guy, the guy that you see, one of the doctors, the interns, he's called Gimpo, and he ran this place, and he worked with the KLF and he was there when they burnt a million pounds on that island in Sheppey. And I asked Gimpo what, because Gimpo was one of the guys throwing literally a million pounds onto the fire and just asked him what, what it was like. And he said, it was pretty fucking horrible. <laughs> oh yeah. The thing about that. this story, Gim wow. Gimpo, yeah, you'll see, uh, I mean, obviously that's his- uh, This name. looks, um... So yeah, it was, it was originally it was originally a bank. It was a bank that yeah, that was a pub that the KLF were heavily yeah. involved in. And then, I know they used to let bombs off in this. It was but, they used to do happenings. Yeah, you know they, they did happenings down here and like had art shows. So all that shit on the wall, that was all us. It was it was painted like white. It was all completely white. And then we just fucked it up and then we painted it white again when we left. So we did all that kind of set dressing and making it look really fucked up. But all those iron doors are proper iron doors. But actual from a bank ball, yeah, yeah from yeah. Basically, all, yeah. all real. It reminds me for some reason of like Girl with a Dragon Tattoo, like the end of it when they're in some dodgy high tech basement that some weirdo has somehow created. This Guys, seems... in this um moment of reflection, has anyone got any um? But not you don't have to have a question, but if you have something that you're desperate to ask, Stuart, I know you're a major fan. Kevin, any anyone feel free to ask us. <coughs> you, can, you can unmute uh, anytime. Cool. Wow. It's totally cool. Down. I was just going to say, is it quite liberating coming from the independence point of view that stuff like inbred, that ending's pretty bleak. The film is funny as hell, but it is more of an endurance test film for me from this, more of like the exploitation inspiration. But is it quite sort of freeing to think you can basically go wherever you want rather than having to worry about um, test audience responses? Uh, kind of, but the thing with me, like, so I've always been like anti-films, which people make like very personal films. Like I see them more like art projects. But So I, when I make a film, I'm always thinking about my audience. Like always, if the audience don't like it, I've kind of failed. So I really want to make something that's entertaining for the particular audience I've got in mind. Um, so, so I mean, it's it's free in that respect. You know, I just want it to be a laugh. You know, but uh, if I was sitting at the screening and I didn't get a reaction, I'd just be I'd be mortified. But luckily, I kind of you know it's kind of work. It takes a lot of work to to make you know. So I storyboard all the. <laughs> All the major effect sequences like this or action scenes you've got to storyboard it so you just sort of know what's going on which angle to take because this is like the first action scene i've ever filmed and i love action scenes and this took like a whole day to film and nothing really happens but it's so difficult shooting action and you've got to story <coughs> storyboard everything and um but I, I find the freedom is just uh, knowing that i'm doing it you know like no one's telling me uh what to do really, you know, I think I might Did struggle. Did you have any support on, on Cradle of Fear? Did you have any um, stunt coordinators or anything like that? Uh, no, not on this one. I felt like we, we kept it simple enough that we didn't need any stunt coordinators. 
and like no one really got smacked. I mean, I basically know the basics of positioning for moves. That those kicks there, they're done in Photoshop. He's not really kicking him. I just extend the leg. You can see it if you watch frame by frame. That's but it. Yeah. I'm so pleased with their sequence. You know, again, no money, shooting it in a day. I, 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 um, that was great. That hit Danny in the face was on purpose or was accidental. So that came what, Fernando? When he kicked him in the face? No, with the, the blood spray. When Danny oh, cuts oh, the head. Uh, we always aimed for the face. <laughs> That's what I was saying earlier that Al's always behind the camera with a syringe. Yeah, yeah. Aiming for an eye or a mouth. If, it, if it's a close up photo, it's me doing the blood because they'll forgive me. It's I, his little kink. If I he get, loves it. If I get him in the eye. Oh, I love that. So Adrian Banton did that. Oh. There was blood on the lens there, which worked really well. Yeah, actually. yeah. That was the ones. That's the only CGI. Oh, the, the, and then a bit coming up. Is it's it's CGI, but it's so early C CGI. And Adrian Banton was our mate, and he was working on massive films. Like he did all the Harry Potter films and Batman. And he he said, "I'll do this one effect for you," and he fucking nailed it. It's it's it's, it's such an expensive effect, and again, it sort of cost us nothing. Which one, sorry? The, well, the, 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 Danny losing half his head. Yeah, Danny losing half his head yeah. because he had to basically like 3D, 3D trap the, the fake head. And I think also well, when Danny sits up, it's, it's much more complicated because Danny's moving and he's got a 3D uh, track the head to create the wound and then the thing's coming out. But so, I mean, I think I, in, I, in, my, in my mind, I had other ways we could achieve it. But when Adrian said he would do it, you know, CG, it was like, well, as long as you can make it look brilliant. And uh, I think he did. I mean, yeah, by the time I... you were doing inbred, uh, we did my head thing, and you can actually see inside, you get it more of 3D. Yeah, yeah, it yeah. shows how things were moving. But yeah, yeah, that was a great, for the time, it was yeah. a brilliant effect. I think it's even better when Danny's... <laughs> Anyone, they're coming to... I, I, I don't... I can't... To be honest with you, I can't remember, but I believe we're coming to the end of the film. Does anyone have any... Um, Questions they want to ask about anything. Oh, oh, can I say this? Can General, I say generic question. Pete, hi. Yeah, just, just a very quick one. Um, Alex was just saying about audience reactions. Um, I wondered where you premiered it. How you? What kind of premiere you had for it? Cradle of Fear was Fright Fest. Fright, Fright Fest. Yeah, yeah. yeah Fright Fest premiere. Two thousand and one. Oh uh, man! Yeah, and can I just say it was two thousand and one, and Fright Fest was a, It's very. It, it, I think it had only been around for what two years. Yeah. On YouTube, and I all I know is that we had like a morning screening. So I, Cradle of Fear was on at like ten or eleven a.m. And all I remember is thinking, my tits are going to be massive on a screen in front of everyone. And uh, me and Alex went off and just got a lot of vodka. Well, I mean, what was mad? And it was me, you, and Emma Rice. Do you remember? We've got a photo. Yeah. It's a really yeah, yeah. nice photo of us. What, what? I think we all ended up at a party, didn't we? In we Primrose all ended Hill. up at a really messy yeah. party in Primrose Hill, oh. where stuff oh. happened. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they don't show the credit. Oh, there they are. I thought they cut away from the credit. Oh my god, it's finished. So, um, I, I just had something really important to say about that that thing. Well, um, Peter had asked us about live showings and sort of. Oh stuff yeah, like yeah, that, yeah. So, yeah. so basically, so we showed it, Peter, at the. Um, uh, at, the yeah, Fright Fest, uh, Fright Fest. Mm. and then it went down so well. There was such an amazing reaction. But when um, your man Paul Anderson, your uh, Event Horizon bloke, mm. he went up to he had a film screening, and I've forgotten what it was. But he said, uh, Gary Stevenson will tell us. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, he he went on stage saying. Uh, that he's really aware of all the, the new feeling, feelings and stuff about new horror. And he goes, uh, and he said, uh, so, you know, I know all the hype about Cradle of Fear and what people are saying about it. So he's like, he mentioned Cradle of Fear as in that had a massive, like, big hype. And it was yeah. after that that, you know, we he said, come and meet him to talk about the Sick Room film. And that went on for a few months, developing the script. We wrote the whole script for it. And then they, they asked us to water it down. And the last time, basically, like, uh, it all ended for me when they said, uh, do you think you can add a car chase in it? And it was just, oh. Oh, no, it's not, not really what I want to do, really. Yeah. So that, that kind of, I mean, 
maybe in hindsight we should have carried on going down that road. You and... could have done a car chase. You did. You did a car chase with um, Eileen, and well, not a chase. Mm. Yeah, but but it's like you know there was no car chase in, in the script that I'd given them, and I just oh, I right. couldn't see where where I was going to fit it in. You know, they just but, wanted uh, to tick that box. In in the script for the sick room, and I'm pretty sure this has been done now. But the sick room is actually on a on an old trawler boat because I love Dead and Dead and Buried. I don't know oh. if you've seen Dead and Buried, but it's kind of set in I a have, yes. fishing village, and it's just it's just a beautiful film. Is it Dan O'Bannon? I think you know. Mm. Uh, it's just a, an amazing film, and uh, and so I wanted like the end of the sick room to be set on this really old, rusty but massive trawler, and so the sick room is actually in in the trawler, and that's why it can't be tracked. It's I all, like that. So it's so like moving around the world. Waters, yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And it was it was great. I loved it. We had loads of Jacob's Ladder bits in it. It just expanded what you see there, but it was quite similar. And uh, yeah, they wanted a fucking car chase. That, that, yeah, I, I don't know. If that was enough to kill it, was it? But sort of. Uh... Well, Where would you put a car chase in there? I mean, it's perfect the way it was. I'm just trying to struggle to see where a car chase is. I suppose t- turning, I mean, how long was the segment in that? Is, was it 20, 20 minutes or something like that? 20, you know? 25. I so think you've, you've got, obviously this, got to turn that into an hour and a half minimum. So yeah. does someone escape and get, I don't know, I don't know why I'm even, I, you know, I was up in the dip in it. But I, I like, just thought of all the things to suggest, I mean, like, I, I don't know. It's like you know, my mind wasn't in car chase world. You know, it's like that's it. It wasn't that film. It was Jacob's Ladder. It was Dario Argento. I was, was just thinking that. But what what's amazing about Cradle of Fear, and that it, it's only just struck me, is that it actually it like it's it's obviously a homage to the portmanteau films and the you know the the. the was not trilogy film, you know, the, the films that have segments and yeah, yeah, yeah. anthology. Oh, yours is the only one that has the old school stuff, like with yeah, the, well, the, the wraparound story that self. affects, <clears throat> and then it goes straight into the to the then future, which was the internet, which was still yeah. burgeoning and it was still an unknown entity. So I would say your film was was really visionary in that in that in that way. It it, it kind of like was a complete salute and a homage to all the old seventies stuff, and then it brought it right up to date. It's a new stuff. Yeah, yeah. And it was like of that, yeah. that stuff that's, that you yeah. grew up with. That's, you know? that's yeah, sort yeah. of pretty much nailed yeah. it. I think you know having the that internet story just really kind of brought it up to date. You know, like just yeah, really made it like modern and stuff. Yeah. And um, I think it was copied. Oh, massively! A couple of films. Oh, yeah. I forgot the one film completely copied it, and then it's 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 appeared as a little thing in other films, you know, just uh, that that kind of thing. But I've forgotten the name of the film that completely copied it. I literally, go to a room. I better to find it. Type in the weapon. It's, got, it's that, I, I reckon I know the one you mean. I think it's it's got two quite famous actors in it as well. Is it right, fear, right. fear? Not fear effect. Fear dot. Fear.com or something. Fear.com. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, think it, I think it might be that. Yeah, yeah. I think it might be right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With, with not, not Saffron Burrows. It's, it's, it's basically it's someone famous. Someone, yeah. uh, I'm going to look it up. I mean, it's weird, it's, it's weird with film, like whether or not they copied the film or it's just in the zeitgeist. Because <laughs> weirdly enough, so Neil came up with a film that Neil's very good at uh, sort of puns. I'm, I'm an ideas, old. man. An ideas, man. Not, not so much to get it together, man. But like back in the day, probably when we were making this, He's, or maybe just after we made this, you had a suggestion for a, a B movie, and I was so into it. And we kind of, it was called uh, Crackadile. Crackadile, and it was, <laughs> and, uh, and and it was it was brilliant. You know, it was about a dealer who's got like a, a pet crocodile that he uses to hide his crack in the crocodile's tank, and then the crocodile eats the crack. Gets addicted to crack, grows really big. Oh, like cocaine and, and bear. Was gonna, was like cocaine bear. <laughs> Terry Gilliam style with a huge crocodile climbing up buildings and and we we spent a while on it and I've got lots of footage. There's a treatment. There's, yeah, a, there's treatment. a treatment. Yeah, yeah. And but we didn't do anything with it. And then I think a year ago the people. Well, Cocaine Bear Co- came out, and in the in in the wake of Cocaine Bear, some now Crocodile is getting made by someone else, another film sort of thing. But, uh, oh, so yeah. so there is a Zeke guy out there. There yeah. are people having similar ideas, you know. So. 
But who knows? But yeah, fear.com uh, yeah. was very. I don't know that the makers of fear.com sat down. <laughs> Like, uh... we, we we definitely don't know and for for legal reasons we're not saying that it copied you of course we're not saying that however i'm gonna read this um, can't, the, can't someone uh, say that Maybe Maybe um, was uh 2003 when four bodies are discovered among the industrial dec decay and urban crime of new york city young brash detective mark riley stephen dorf Teams with ambitious Department of Health researcher Natasha McElhone, that's who I was trying to think from, uh, she was in, um, oh, bugger, the, the uh, huge <laughs> film, <laughs> to uncover the cause of their violent and inexplicable deaths. The only common factor shared by the victims, they all died after logging on to fear.com. There you go, yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, I'd say they definitely... 100% copied it. <laughs> <laughs> I've got to say, I've always liked the tagline for Cradle Affair. It's not if they die, it's how. I thought that yeah. is just yeah, good. Yeah. Tagline. You've got to have a good tagline. I mean, they've that had is a... just... I've forgotten yeah. who came up with that one. but um, Because I, I, I think I sent an, an, an email to all my mates saying, let's think of a good tagline. You know, I've got loads of suggestions. Yeah. But that was, that was brilliant. I think there's a film coming out which oh, there's one recently which like if you don't die or it's like it's a good tagline anyway one we yeah, what we did inbred had a good the one as well how they die yeah. it, if they, no was yeah, it the, so the well, what's the inbred the one inbred again? one is that they came in peace they left in peace I love that one. yeah and then someone yeah, was, no, no, one. no but that was originally used in the original Gary Oldman, Alan Clark, football film. Uh, what was that? The one? Firm. The Firm. Yeah. That, oh. So the, the original, The Firm. That was their tag. But I didn't know that. I mean, someone just no, said I they didn't. came in peace, they left in pieces. No, they didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's really clever. I love that one. That's I remember me and you, Alex. We went to a party one night, and for for some reason, we came up with a really cool tagline. And it was, um, "It's not low, Bry. No, hang on, I'm not. It's not lowbrow, it's not highbrow, it's monobrow. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, like I like it. I remember that. I remember no, that. I remember that. Was it, was it Friday the 13th? Oh, come <laughs> on! It wasn't. Oh, come on, that's a good I don't then, know why we came up with that, but yeah, I... No, I totally remember yeah. that. I, I, I thought that was Neil or something. But no, that that's Neil. Like the yeah, Mexican okay. one with monobrow. Right, okay. <laughs> No. It's not, not highbrow, it's more yeah. It's a good line. I like it's, it. It's an important thing, though, isn't it? A tagline. I think creepazoids was the worst one I ever remember. Unique. Yeah. Well, a tagline, it, it's just that interesting thing. It's the way that um, Alien was pitched, apparently, as Jaws in space. So just being able to just reduce something to that, you know, just. Yeah. That, well, yeah, oh, they, they the tend line. to say for fans. Yeah. For fans. You know, I, 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 fans I heard a brilliant really like anecdote. So about how James Cameron pitched uh, the sequel to, to Alien. He like, he literally went in there and he wrote Alien and then he just wrote an S with a dollar sign in it. And went, <laughs> <laughs> more. <laughs> Bigger, more. <laughs> I don't mean it. Appeal to the widest brackets of the- Can I just, can I ask your fans like what they thought about tonight and you know, like, could have made it better or worse or anything. Yeah, guys, it, um, it, let's let's open it up to you. please don't be shy. Now is the time yeah. for you take right, take off your mutes now. Come on. I think Stephen Buckingham should say something. Come on, mate. Hello, Stephen. Hello, Stephen. Mate. Some music. <laughs> hey. Hello, Hello, Stephen. I thought my visuals were fantastic. Uh, uh, nice one, mate. Thank you. You can't beat practical effects when done no. decently. Yeah. Good, it takes yeah. so much effort to make a computer <clears throat> effect do anything totally, on screen. Totally agree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, I, I like seeing films these days, which is using uh, practical blood. Uh, you know, it's just it makes such a difference. You know, and a, a lot of filmmakers do like uh, doing it, um, uh, but it's it's just weird that so many people kind of don't. I mean, I don't know what the issue is. At the very least, you should combine computer with practical. Inbred, I think, does quite a good job of, yeah, sort of yeah. having mm -hmm. yeah, there's computer stuff in there. You can't have but, a horse's crushing yeah. someone's head. But, but it, there's but, also blood tubes in there and, well, and actual... But even know. with Inbred, the horse scene 
and any bits of blood that's all real blood, you know, yeah. even if it's composite. Not real blood, blood but, but <laughs> yeah, there's, yeah. there's liquid flowing. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <clears throat> but, you know, just... That's the only time, I think, I think when you're using real effects, that's the only time people get to have real fun. And like, ironically, oh, yeah, yeah, all yeah. the horror becomes set, quite yeah. childlike. So I think like, as an actor, everyone loves getting I'm not a trained life. actress, but you, anything visceral, you, you get so into it. And yeah, yeah. so most actors, even if they're bloody hardcore trained, they, they, they love the chance. No, to they love it. I think as long as it's so the, the the what I've heard the issue with a lot of these big bigger budget stuff for some reason it's like uh, there's a lack of authority there's so many like voices that so you know like so the effects work the gore work gets pushed to the end of the day and gets rushed and it's just uh -huh. not not fun anymore <coughs> you know you just need to have like a day which go right this is going to be a gore day you know we're going to start off we'll do the effects in the morning and you know we're going to get covered in blood and uh, and it's a whole day and and like like you say, even like the professional like Joe Hartley and stuff, she wasn't sure about it, but once it got going, you know, when the blood starts squirting, everyone so just much fun. fucking loves it. Mm. It's, it's I think most people love it because it, it actually allows you to become very, very, very childlike again. Yeah. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Very it's very visceral and it's very real. It's actually really easy to act with. Yeah, because, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um it's there and it's raw. And uh, I think, you know, there is something very enjoyable about playing with human fluid. I, mean, I, I don't know if anyone's it got... It makes it easy. It makes the job easy. I don't know if anyone's got the internet in front of them, but can you type in... A, I'm pretty sure it's the film. It's got the shittest title of any film. I think it's called The Night Comes For Us. The what? The Night, the Night Comes For Us. And it's made by the people that made The Raid. Um, and it's... It's one of the most amazing films I've seen recently. Oh, Just really? recently. The night comes for us, guys. Yeah, yeah. It, I don't know if it's called that, but it's kind of a, it's uh, so it's uh, yeah, but yeah, it's called that. Uh, Twenty eighteen. Yeah, eighteen came out. Have you have you seen it? Yeah, uh, no, I've just got it in front of me in the computer. Right, I've just uh, everyone it. here Maybe. has to watch this film. It's just hey. fucking bonkers, and I don't know why people aren't going on about it. Because it's got... It's the same director as the right? No, it's, it's some of the same stunt oh, crew, same and yeah. uh, but it's it's just, it's the most insane... Because I, I love Starship Troopers, you know, I love Paul Verhoeven stuff. I love Starship Troopers. Yeah. So, but, but this film, it's like Starship Troopers meets the raid. Uh, just, just the amount of gore, the violence, you've never seen. It's the most beautiful... People have machine gun fights from, from one foot away. Right, that's, that's what we're, no, that's what we're watching later. Right, we'll watch that later. But let's all watch cool. that later. It's Google actually brilliant. says it's on Netflix. Is it? <clears throat> really? Yeah, really? It really? Yeah, it's on Netflix. I want to. Uh, that reminds me that, that um, Alex uh, was really pissed off that uh, Cradle of Fear wasn't banned or cut. They uh, released yeah, yeah. it uncut. It was like, ah. what? You know, oh, it, was just, oh, yeah. it was a real insult. Yeah. Okay. There's a little anecdote about that. So we knew this guy. Well, he still he works for the BBFC. We, he just started. Oh, he, yeah, he David, just. Uh, oh fuck! So he just started with the BBFC in, in, in about <laughs> two thousand, and now now he's. I'm pretty sure he's still at the BBFC. <clears throat> it's not David Hyman, no, David Hyman. No, it's not David Hyman. Oh, it's okay. it um, someone else. And so he said, "I'm working the BBFC," and we made Cradle of Fear, and I. We all those. He deliberately put blood on tits. These blood things tits, that were supposed yeah. to tick the boxes that yeah. would get you censored. It was the first, like... first, yeah, blood on blood on tits. Just all this stuff, the the mondo stuff, the more gratuitous stuff. So I wanted it to get cut. Obviously, obviously for, for UK, so it have an, an uncut yeah, version. Yeah, yeah. And then, <laughs> and he said, so we sub we submitted it. And then he, I got an email from this bloke. I only met him a couple of times, and he goes, uh, "Yeah, your film Cradle of Fears just just come in." I made sure it's been passed. It was like, what? Oh, no, <laughs> we want it banned. We want the post. I, I was going to ask you about this earlier, actually, because yeah. I think you were really unlucky with your timing, because obviously, as we've got older, there's a lot of films from the video nasty era, which now get 15 certificates. They, yeah, they're yeah. so tame. Mm. And it's, it's almost, there was a mystique, um, you know, when I was young about the idea of an uncensored film. And obviously yeah. sometimes the, the sort of mystique is actually more glamorous or more exciting than the film itself. Absolutely. But yeah, I, yeah. yeah, I am quite amazed. I, I, you know, I, I can think of some films on the cusp of that era, which, 
you know, still, you know, Cradle of Filth still is is got like some seriously intense core. But you know, you, you go forward ten years and you realize the BB, you know, FC. There's certain Absolutely. areas they really still don't want to touch sexual I mean, violence, it, understandably. But generally speaking, they've they've relaxed all the stuff back yeah, then. We were like, like, what the fuck is going on here? I mean, what I mean, worried you, about. And now they've relaxed. And I, I don't think a young person can really appreciate just how more relaxed it's gone, really. Yeah, well, absolutely, I mean, man. Yeah, you, yeah. you guys probably know more than me, but I still don't think it would be a 15. I oh, no, I, no, definitely not, no. no. So I'm, 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 yeah, I'm talking about some of the video nasty films, which they, I think they have more reputation, but no, you realise this film is still, for me, like straight 18. But as you say, I, I'm still surprised at the time. It was... It wasn't. Oh. It was only a few years after things like Reservoir Dogs, which was yeah. you know all the you know, Reservoir Dogs. Mm-hmm. You look at it, hindsight; it's like yeah. I'm, I'm really surprised Cradle of Fear got yeah. past uncut at the time. I, I, I think I think our mate had something to do with that. It shouldn't have been <laughs> past uncut. There's no way. <laughs> no, no, it did not make sense at all. We, we <laughs> Alex, don't you don't you remember? I I have a memory of this. Correct, correct me if I'm wrong. I'm going to a different film now. So Pavarella. Hmm. Very silly, frothy, light-hearted film. Yes, with tits. Um, but I remember, um, I don't know if it was Alex or Josh who told me this, but it was very, um, with, the, with the BBFC who do the whole censorship thing and they, they do your, your certification, they said, <laughs> you can have tits and you can have someone whipping someone, but you can't have sexual gratification you, you can't have tits and whipping in the, in the same scene. Yes. So there was a really, really light-hearted, what well, I thought was a light-hearted We, we were whip, whipping you with tentacles. Yeah. Yeah, I was in the cult of perv. Yeah. I, 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 and um, I'm... That was the, one of the favourite things I've ever filmed. Going on and all I'm doing, and all I, we're all having fun here, doesn't matter, but like all I'm doing is going, ah... Oh, Oh, me, and, me and uh, Josh are just you cannot have slapping you with these rubber tentacles. Yes, no, they say violence and you can, time, it? Not, and you can have sex. You cannot have sex and violence in the same no, show. No, but it was more jokey, you know, with Perfre- like Perfre- We had the people with erections, but they were bananas with like a, you know, <laughs> like everyone was running around with bananas, which is a really good way of. Uh, Josh but I, I, I just remember being really surprised that you you can have all the content you can have all the content in there you can have sex and have violence but you can't mix pleasure and violence no they they mm. still don't like i mean i think that's still a thing isn't it yeah yeah that Emily, was, i'm just reminded that the, i think the first time i worked with you was on pervarella and um, um Alan, as usual with these things are sort of uh um, Alan and i sort of you know we love each other, you know, sort of like we're good mates. We piss each other off at times as well, sort of thing. So he's always, <coughs> usually I could have joined a film a couple of weeks after he started because he's pissed me off or something like that. And on Pervarella, when I turned up on set, you'd already sort of started filming. And the on the first day I, I was there, I was like, you know, how do you want me to help, mate? And he goes, well, we need someone to operate the smoke machine down mm-hmm. there. So I kind of went down into this kind of pit thing. It, it was the bit when you appear from the machine. Oh, that's my. You you were basically stood on this grid, and so my job was sort of like just to sort of like was basically to blow smoke up your ass. So like, you were kind of up there, sort of like in a bikini, maybe not even the top half of the bikini. I was down here, kind of releasing smoke up to the trying to be a gentleman and not look at your gusset too much, sort of thing. But I needed to know what was going on. So the, I, I, and I remember the one time I sort of snuck a look, just to like you know, have they called cut something like that? One of the one of the who were the brothers that were shooting it? Howard Ford and John Ford. One of them just happened to be looking down. Uh, like, really? it? it was just like, perv. Just like, no, no, honestly. Anyway, it was a, it was a great first job on a film set, you know. So well, I was uh, so very I, grateful for that. I, 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 I was going to say that tentacle scene that you mentioned with me and Josh, <laughs> like whipping you either side with the rubber tentacles. That I was just. That was the scene where I just, I forgot to call cut. I didn't call cut. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure we ran out of film because we were shooting on Super 16 millimetre. So it was only like sort of 10 minute film reels and something. So the whole film reel ran out. Me and Josh were still going on. Just, and, just carrying on. <laughs> so, yeah. I said, yeah, <laughs> we're out of film. The only thing that did bother me was that I remember being, um, I, was, I was quite manacled in, like, I was quite like, I was part of the set. 
Yeah. Yeah, Pavarella and Cradle of Fear. So in Cradle of Fear, mm -hmm. when I had my stomach exploded, and in Pavarella, you kept doing this to me. I couldn't really move. And I do remember you going, right, that's it. That's right, cart for lunch. And, and everyone move. went to lunch except me. I was yeah. just stuck there. Didn't they really come They come and fit you? No, I, I, I couldn't eat because you were like, well, everyone left. <laughs> yeah, you can still eat, though. <laughs> yeah, no one fed me. I, was, I remember going, uh, like, I was uh, stuck that. on the wall of Pervarella going, ah. <laughs> that's, that's, that's a pretty sad image. <laughs> like chasing noodles. Yeah. You know, on the side, on the side, you didn't get fat like Danny Food. <laughs> <laughs> He's gone at, old. At you can this see point, him at this point, um, we're all having a lot of fun here, and I'm I'm fucking loving it. But I I, I just want to see if um, Kevin, Stephen, Fernando, Alex, <clears throat> Stuart, Gary, Weegzilla. Peter, anyone has a last question? Okay, what do you I think about it? Um, a chance, mate. As I say, no questions, but I just want to say thank you very much, everybody, for this evening. It's been brilliant. This is a serious bucket list for me, item gun. Oh, wow. That's Emily's funny. got me info, Alex. You said you wanted a, you know, anything else, though. If you want an email yeah, 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 or anything yeah, after this, I'll go for it, mate. I mean, I've really enjoyed it. It's been a new thing for me, but it's been a right laugh, especially being with... I said to her, I didn't want, like, hundreds of people here. This is perfect. And, you know, it's just re it's really nice. It's cosy. Uh, so I hope I hope you guys have enjoyed it. You know, and so oh, it's been brilliant. It's a lovely... Yeah, I've loved it. Brilliant. Yes, Love it's uh, it's cool. Thank yeah. you, Kevin. Thank you, Kevin. <clears throat> just want to say big thanks, yeah. Yeah. So nice I have got a T-shirt to give away. Oh! But... Is it one T-shirt? Well, the, the question that you would have said, someone answered already. Well, I don't, I don't think they have. I've deliberately not answered the question. Well, check, check with Emily how she was. Oh, no, no, the, but, uh... no, but I know Stuart knows the answer. This is the oh. thing. Stuart, have you already got a T-shirt? Should we let someone else get it? I haven't. I haven't got the... I gave away my only one, which is yours, but I have been looking for the Thrill Kill one. Mm, okay. Well, what, this one? <laughs> yes, mate. All right, okay, well... I'll tell you what, um, Stuart's going to get one by default because we're going to chat about Danny Filth and he's going to do me some favours. So, okay, yeah. I've got so this, another... is, this is for someone else. So, I've got another T-shirt. Where is it? Thank Which you. One? Uh, this one. So... Well, the one you're wearing. No, not the one I'm wearing, but the <laughs> same design. No one wants that. Want this one, no one's it? got this one. Yeah. In fact, I've, I might as well give away two, the, the trendy one. We, then you need two questions. Well, no, it's going to be the one question and then the first two answers. Okay. And I, I think is it is it fair to say the, is the, uh, to, to write it on? Can, can everyone write stuff? Big chat boxes up, guys. Have you got access to a keypad? Already. Is it, but it needs needs to be everyone. We Fernando, really want to see those fingers. Fernando, can you can you type something in? Kevin, can you type something in? Yeah, Go on yeah. to chat box. Go into chat Barry. box. I'll have a look. All right. So, so the question. So basically, um, the first person that answers it on the chat box, uh, and they've got to be spelt correctly, they're going to win the t-shirts. So, <laughs> the first two. The first two. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So the the question is, um, Emily did a cameo in one of the videos I made for Cradle of Filth, what was the name of the song? Oh. Gary, I think Gary might have it. Gary's Mr. Research, isn't he? Come on. No. Oh, no. Oh. Are they allowed to use the internet? Hang on. We need to check this. Check it. Oh, hang on. I'm hang guessing. On. Yeah, I just spelled it right. <laughs> I love Cradle of Filth. I ran out of We'll check it. Oh, OK. Anyone else? We really want to see those fingers. Oh, I want to see those fingers. <laughs> yeah, half ten. I've got. I've got. Alex is researching now. Hang on a sec. I've got. <laughs> to enslave has come up. Is that so? Right? Wasn't that the name of the entire EP, or was the uh, was that the name? It was the, the name of the song and the EP. Emily, do you know? Because you were in it. Come on. <laughs> I just 
knew what I was supposed to have. I didn't. I never knew. We I was all do, to. don't we? You know, with, with Alex, Alex would just say, "Do you want to do this?" I'd be like, "Yeah, I love it." Okay. So, so I thought that. Yeah. yeah so no, no, yeah, yeah. I thought well, I did no, too. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Is it? Yes. Why so, can we, can we watch it? Are we allowed to watch no, it? No. So, so, so far, no one's got it right. Cradle <laughs> to Enslave from Cradle to Enslave. Her ghost in the fog. That's no. what. Hang on, hang on, Emily. You, you've already got to. <laughs> no one's got it right yet. So you're still in there with a chance. We people. really want to see them fingers. Really want to see those fingers. Uh, I know it, but I'm not allowed Fernando, to say. <laughs> Fernando, you're close, mate. You're close, Fernando. Well, is he? Put, well, come on, he's Portuguese. Come on, that maybe if he's spelled it wrong or something like that. You might need to add a the. Yes, yeah, yes. Do it, Fernando. Do it, Fernando. Do it. Come on, go add a the. Um, I have the music video in my head. Yeah. Do it, Fernando. It's yours, mate. I know we need the top two answers. Is Gary allowed? Gary's <clears> completely wrong. I have the video in my head. I have the song in my head. I could sing it almost. Fernando, you've almost given the right answer. <laughs> well, he's, he's missing a word, isn't he? Google's I helping. I don't want to I'm not Googling it, so really. I'm in the meantime, Googling. we're going to reenact the sick room. Who wants me to hit Alex in the head with a hammer? <laughs> <laughs> oh. um, it's, it's got some blood in there. <laughs> is it actually her? <laughs> a little bit. You see? <laughs> Wigs has got it. Cradle to Enslave. Yes, yes. We, it's Wigzilla. Go on, Wigzilla. Can you see my car? But there's two, there's, there should be two. <clears throat> yeah, there's, there's two winners. Oh, wait. It's just uh, a word that missing. Uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, Fernando. So I'll tell you what. Fernando's a brother. I'll tell you what. We'll, we'll give one to yeah. Fernando and, and one to Gary. Oh. Yeah. Thank you. Weegzilla has won it. I was so, which, uh, is he choosing which yeah. one? Weegzilla gets to choose. Weegzilla, you've spoken to me before. Why have you gone quiet? Can we hear you? One uh, one. The one, the one attack to this is the, the second one is a bit more trendy. <clears throat> this is the long sleeve. You get more, more bang for your butt. That's the front. And and it's got this on the... Uh, on the uh, and, and then that's on the back. The second one. This one. Second yeah. one. Okay. It's warmer. It's warmer. <laughs> okay, and, and we've got this in a few sizes. What, what would you like, XL or L? XL. Brilliant. He looks like a small oh, tomato. That's so cool, oh, Alex. So amazing. And uh, cool. who, who are we giving the other one? Fernando. So, Fernando. So, so Fernando, you're, you're going to get this one. Uh, I'm okay. Not the other, not cool. that face? I'm really glad I wasn't expecting nothing like this. And, oh. Uh, what, what size do you want, Fernando? I've got XL. I'm a busy guy. Easy. And uh, <laughs> thanks, guys. <laughs> Gary, uh, Gary, I'm going to send you something random, yeah. Well, that would be amazing. You don't have to, though. Uh, I'm, I think I'm I, I think scared. I, think we probably will. I just need to ask Alex uh, one thing. What is this pair of <coughs> pants? Oh, the right. on? Yeah. Well, this was uh, left over from. So I've got some cradle of filth memorabilia. <laughs> B B six B slit B. I don't know. Don't that. You maybe you took them off too quickly. <laughs> oh, I just realised we've had our whole our, our whole picture is 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 uh reverse. Is, is it? Yeah. Sorry. Like I, I, we should have switched our image. I didn't realise. I've, I've just realised everything's back to front. Can we start again? Yeah, can we start again? <laughs> but yeah, this says uh, it says uh, six six slick six sex six slit. You like a bit of a mouthful, do you, Alex? <laughs> this is nothing to do with me. That's this a tongue twister. He loves a mouthful. Oh, um, Fernando, sure. where are you? Where yes, are you? Yeah. Um, I've got some sort of you know, you know, memorabilia. Tons of T-shirts. I've got some handwritten lyrics that Danny did for, I think, her ghost. But uh, is that stuff that could sell? Or could that can sell easily on eBay. On eBay. All right. It's good to know. Fernando, where are you now? Uh, where are? You? Or like uh, Alex, mate, you could do uh, me a favour and give me your PayPal address. 
Can you put your headphones Fernando, where are you living yeah, right we'll, now? We'll, we'll, we'll talk, you... Stuart. Sorry? We'll talk, yeah? Please do. Yes, I'd love to, mate. All right. I'll yeah, no worries. add my full info to Emily and we'll go from there. Okay, mate. Brilliant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it'll be oh, nice to get stuff cool. to a good home. Yeah. I Thank can send Emily also my full address. I live in Portugal. Um, <coughs> Emily, if, if Fernando can, can send you that privately, um, yeah. if Emily gets Fernando's details privately and, yes, and weeks of his details. And then, Fernando, and then you on, you're on my Patreon now, aren't you? <laughs> yes, I am. Fantastic. And where are you right now? Are you What country are you in? Portugal. Oh, how's Portugal right now? Is it nice and sunny and hot and cool? Today is windy. Really windy. Hey. Yes, Bear. <laughs> <laughs> welcome, oh welcome to their family. Thank you so much. Emily, you were asking about your knickers earlier. Um... <laughs> How great is this? Post. We have a European. Thank you so much. Yeah. <laughs> um. Okay. Well, guys. Um. It's twenty-five to eleven, and I've unfortunately two kids. To, well, they might be asleep, but I've got to get two kids to bed. And mm. I want to say, can we all say? And I'm not just trying to suck up to Alex's ass. Oh, suck, yeah. suck, suck my ass, Emily. <laughs> he, might, he, will, he might like that anyway. But I just want to say, and I, I mean this, even though I don't sound very genuine, I mean this genuinely. Alex, Yo. <laughs> I, I did not think you were going to do this. This was a this was a wild call out to you. And I, yeah. I'm very grateful that you joined us because you've made this. Normally, it's just me trying to make an event special. And you oh. made it massively special. Oh, but yeah, don't do yourself down, then, uh, Emily. I mean, you know, you're brilliant. The way you've stuck with the genre and yourself mm. and just kept it going, man. I'm, I'm so impressed. I'm really proud of you. I don't know if I can say that. But I, I, yeah. You know, yeah. But we're, we're very proud of you, Emily. The heroine of the scene, doesn't yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You are the new, you are a screen queen in my eye. You know, but a beautiful, brilliant one, you know. Thank you. And, uh, but, but it all started with you and I have a lot of gratitude and I've always oh. got on with you and I love you and you are so much fun to work with and you're so easy to work with. And you um, have I honestly think without you, I wouldn't be here now because... You were her brother. Should we just all go? Yeah. <laughs> <That's>, that's... <laughs> Get a sick room, yeah? All right. <laughs> right, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, but, 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 just, Emily, you've been brilliant. Like getting us all together doing this has been great. And I'm so pleased everyone's enjoyed it. Yes, it's been brilliant. Thank, thank you. Nice way to spend my night. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Amazing. Yeah, yeah. If you, do, if you want to do an inbred one, you know, I'll, I'll, be, I'll be bang into it. You know. Perverella. Or Perverella. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or inbred store on Amazon Prime. We did do a Perverella watch along, but we, we didn't think. We didn't think we could get Alex, so we could do another one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Has anyone got any last words to say to Alex? And thank the... you. Just thank you. That's all it is, mate. That's all I've got to say. My pleasure. Honestly, my pleasure. It's been, yeah, it's been really thank fun. Thank you very guys. much. Yeah, yeah yourself as well. Respect. Yeah, hugely enjoy that. Thanks, massive Can respect. Yeah. Legend, Alex, and thank you so much for coming out and uh, and doing this. Yeah, uh, I, I think Thanks, we all agree. It's great to see you face in now. another movie. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. yeah that's, that's and if you want to do somebody in right here, <laughs> <laughs> it's been great. I, I hope you recorded this, Emily, because I think it's been pretty, pretty cool. Yeah. I have. Oh, brilliant. Yeah, so thank you, everyone. Chatting along. I should have really bit. I've I, got want, to I wanted to say something, if if possible. Yeah, okay, go, go for it. Well, uh, I want to thank Alex, Shandon, and Emily, and everybody involved that uh, were able to Neil. create <coughs> Cradle of Fear. Cradle of Fear represents to me that kind of horror movie that is done by passion, not for yeah. money. Yeah, exactly. Because yeah. art, despite the budget cuts, the the experience of the people involved, new actors, new professionals, they do this because they love horror. Mm -hmm. And I'm I'm myself yeah. someone trying to enter in the horror business as a director, as an actor, and this movie is important to me. Like very, like uh, other 
horror movies where they made like the dead, the, the Texas, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, all that uh, type of mm-hmm. horror. Cool. Not just for money, not for a paycheck, and like they do in no. Hollywood now. No, you just do it you. because you enjoy it. And... Yep. It's, it's a form rock, of expression. Yeah. It's a form of expression. And yeah, yeah, the yeah. horror community is very strong. It's very friendly. <laughs> and it is the most open-minded, left-wing, yeah, beautiful yeah. community I've ever encountered. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I could carry on talking about the horror community being so amazing, you know. I, I realised that taking in bread around the world and just the love I had. Mm. People that loved Cradle of Fear, so weird. The Soska sisters worked in a cinema, uh, a cinema shop and they said the one film they didn't sell off was Cradle of Fear. This is like before they'd met me. It's just a, they thought it was just a fucking nutty film. Yeah, and, I love the Soska sisters. I I, I've chat, I chat to them quite a lot. Yeah, they're, oh, they're great. Yeah, you did do a good interview with them. Yeah, yeah, they're 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 pretty rock and roll. Well, listen, uh, it's my job to I guess. It's very difficult to round it up. I just really hope you've enjoyed it. And please know, everybody, um, from Patreon, this is an exclusive event. Alex does not normally do this kind of thing, so uh, we're quite lucky. And, um, yeah, uh, I just want to say thank you to Alex to to do it. Um, and really nice to touch base with you again, he, even though it was really weird. I hadn't spoken to you for 15 years, and then we did a Zoom. Oh. We were like, it's like being brother and sister. It's really odd. But um, yeah, well, I really want to work. I'd like, love to work with you like again. In cement garden, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're watching that later. That's a good film. Oh. All right. No, Emily has been brilliant. And, you know, so you deserve to say goodbye and then we'll all turn our things We up. love you, Emily. We Thank love you, Emily. Yeah, yeah. We do. That's it. That's it. Okay. Right. right. Okay. I love you all, guys. I love you all. Thank you. Right. And um, I'll, I'll just, it's one of those things where you're like, you say goodbye. No, you say goodbye. You say goodbye. I'm going to have to hurry, Bob. <laughs> Love you all. Love you all. Bye bye. 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 Thanks, Thank you. Cheers, everybody. <laughs> Thanks, all. Yeah. Okay. Hey, hey. <laughs> it's not fucking ending. Fucking. <laughs> <laughs>